blimey, this is sure an anime collection. That's right, it's time we once again look at all of the anime that I own. I'm not going to do what I did last time and have a shaky camera. I'm going to um, take each of these down and show them off and be proud of them. Join me as we look at the anime collection that I own. So first up we are going to be looking at Lupin the Third Part 4. This was an anime limited collector's edition that was released a few years ago now and by god it looks absolutely beautiful. This is all of Lupin the Third Part 4 and this is the sub only release and there's a reason why it's a sub only release because they came back and did, did the dub later on. That's right. Included in here is, well, it's all of Lupin the Third Part 4, including a rather nice art book. Yeah, I love the Anime Limited Collectors Editions, and even some of their Ultimate Editions are absolutely fantastic. But I thought I'd discuss each and every one of these individually. Yeah. Next up is Lupin the Third, the woman named Fushiko Minie. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm having to censor uh, this with my phone, but another fantastic Lupin the Third series that if you can't get a hold of part four, I would really recommend this as an opening to the series if you've never uh, watched it before. But to be fair, a lot of the Lupin stuff is very easy to get into, at least in my opinion. Maybe not the movies. After that is Lupin the Third, Part 4, again. This is the dub release. The reason I've got two versions is because Anime Limited did that collector's edition that I shown you earlier, and then they went back and did the dub separately. So if you buy it, you've got the choice of the collector's edition with the sub on, or you, want, you can get it with the dub. The reason I've got it twice is because I think they were offering it for, I can't remember if it was free or if it was like five pound or something ridiculous cheap to buy it again on the year uh, if you'd already bought it. So me being me, I was just like, you know what? I loved part four, so I'm more than happy to watch it again dubbed. So yeah, I picked it up and so yeah, I've got it twice. After that is Lupin the Third, Bye Bye Lady Liberty. This is a discotheque release, I believe. Um, the reason I got this is because I was ordering something else from America and I put this in just to kind of bump up the um, the price for the shipping and stuff like that because it wasn't worth it by itself. It was, it was slightly cheaper to buy this and have a different kind of shipping than it was to buy the other one separately. This is, a, it's okay. Um, I didn't really enjoy this quite as much as some of the other ones, but it is still a great loop in the third movie. The weird part is, is that this uses the original old dub, so if you kind of like, instead of looping, they call him Wolfgang or Wolf or something like that, so I had to switch the dub off, it was, uh, it was really annoying, us. so it was a sub-only release. So yeah, um, I enjoyed it, I'm going to watch it again because I did really enjoy it. One thing I do like is that they, um, they, co they use the thing on here, the, the, the title, covers the, um, this character so she, you can actually see her on the side of the thing, I just thought that was slightly amusing. After that is, well, my favourite of all of the Ghibli movies, and that is Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro. Um, Studio Ghibli has so many fantastic movies, but I don't know what it is. There's something about them as I kind of get to a certain point and I kind of get a bit bored with them as I'm watching them. Um, not to say that they're bad or anything, but it's like, I, I don't know. I just say, um, But out of all of them, this is the one that I can watch over and over again because it's just super fun. Um, Easily my favourite. It's not really a technically a Ghibli movie, it's a Hayao Miyazaki movie. But, eh, you know, it's Ghibli before Ghibli was a thing, technically. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. And it's on Netflix, so if you um, have never watched it, I would really recommend checking this one out. Next up is a, mo it's a movie, uh, it's an anime that I've watched before, but I've not actually watched the uh, the Blu-ray. This was a Christmas gift for me, um, and that is Kimono Friends, uh, the complete first season, which is a lie because there was no second season. 
and if you tell me there's a second season, I will tell you that you are lying. Lying through your teeth. So yeah, Kimono Friends is the little series that could. It's that series that you just expect so little from, but it's so incredibly charming and so fun. I really absolutely love it. Um, the only reason I haven't watched it is because um, I imported a few American Blu-rays and I kind of have to switch between the American and uh, the UK um, Blu-ray player I've got. So it's just a bit of a faff, so I just tend to watch all of my American Blu-rays all as a batch. Uh, I'm really looking forward to re-watching this one. I'm just talking about it. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I can't wait to re-watch this. But again, if you've never watched it and you are unsure about CG animation, check this one out because this is this is the one where it has a budget shoestring. Well, it's got a budget of a shoestring, but it proves that a series with so limited visuals, so limited in terms of what it can do visually can still tell an absolute fantastic story and I think that a lot of people who are into anime can learn a lot from this series. Next up is volumes 1 and 2 of Shiro Bako. This is an absolute fantastic series. Oh god, she's fell down. This is an absolute fantastic series that I would wholly recommend for people who are interested in the anime industry. Yeah, it's got that whole cute girl does cute things kind of aspect to it. And yeah, it's not going to be for everybody. But honestly, I would, I absolutely love this. This is actually in, I can't remember if it's in my top five. It's definitely in my top ten anime series of all time. Um, I remember a lot of people, especially on UK Anime News Network, were really hyping this one up. Um, they were saying, oh yeah, yeah, you've got to watch it if you like Girls and Pants, if you like Prison School, it's by the same director and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh, you know what, I'm going to try it. And I watched the first episode and Crunchyroll and I was just like straight away, I need to own this in my collection. So I trepped myself, um, last year I trepped myself and uh, bought parts, both parts one and uh, parts two. And yeah, um, this is... Again, I love this series so much. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited for the movie, which I doubt we're going to get over here, so it's going to be another import, but yeah, can't wait for the movie, for this one to uh, get a release or uh, at least subbed. Definitely 100% recommend checking this one. I'm going to be a 100% recommend and checking out people a lot of these uh, series, but yeah, check this one out if you like anime and want to learn more about the making of anime. Fun, fun title. Next up is another title that I picked up incredibly cheap, and that is Young Blackjack. When I first picked up Crunchyroll, this was one of the first titles I watched, and I absolutely adore the ending of this um, series. I just love the way how it uses the original Tezuka char style characters and then merges them into the, the new characters. Blackjack is a series that I love so much. But you can't get any of the others. I think I do have the DVD of the movie that came out a long time ago. Um, I say a long time ago, 1996. Um, I didn't really like the movie quite as much, but I loved the manga and I felt that I had to support the series. Um, this was, I think this was just like 6 99 or something ridiculous cheap on an Amazon sale. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to pick it up because um, it's a nice filler one to have in your collection. It's not going to be anything that will knock your socks off, but you're probably going to have a decent time watching it. Uh, I feel it pales in comparison to traditional blackjack, classic blackjack, but yeah, um, I'd still see it. it's worth a shot at some point. Also, this is a calendar that came with uh, my uh, copy of Keijo, which we will look at later on. Keijo is a fantastic series and easily the best sports anime out there. I know what I said. Well, yeah, this came with it and somehow it kind of got shuffled in with my collection. I'm not going to complain. Next up is, well, this is a trilogy and that is Love, Chunibyo and Other Delusions Season 1. Love, Chunibyo and Other Delusions Take On Me, which is a movie. And Love, Chunibyo and Other Delusions Heartthrob. So this, I, I saw the meme with the girl. And... A lot of people said it was one that you'd either gonna love or you hate. And you know what? Kyo Annie, until I kind of just focused on doing free and kind of 
didn't really do much else apart from free. I absolutely loved nearly every single one of their series. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to try it out. I'm still needing that um, Mirai Colours something and pretty much anything Sound Euphonium because we only got Season 1 of Sound Euphonium and that's a crime. But yeah, Love Chernobyl and Other Delusions is... Um, it's a, based on a light novel. There is no English version of the light novel, annoyingly. But I really enjoyed what I watched of it. It's a fun series that you can easily watch. It's one of those ones you can you can just put on and you can easily just turn your brain off and then just kind of enjoy it. And yeah, I I really enjoy this series. It's uh, it's one of those ones where people will be like, oh, it's a guilty pleasure. But in my opinion, there is no guilty pleasure. You just enjoy something. Or you don't. But yeah, uh, again, another one I would recommend if you like Kyo Annie um, and you like this, some of their cute girls doing things, stuff, um, if you like Keon and stuff like that, I would really recommend this. It's very light novel esque. Um, it kind of feels like that Kyo Annie kind of did a lot of like series, like they did Love Chinibio, then they did uh, Amagi Brilliant Park, and then they did their Mirage Colour Phantoms, and then they did Sound Euphonium, and they kind of went through the, that phase where a lot of their titles seemed to go under the radar a little bit. Um, I don't know if this is popular or not, I think a lot of people were kind of, when I did see I was watching it, a lot of people were hyped, but I don't really hear many people talking about it. Which is weird, I guess it's because it kind of ended and then we haven't had anything more whereas the, if the light novel was out I think there might have been that discussion around the light novels but yeah, um, if you're reading this Yen Press, t pick up the light novels, I, I'd be interested to uh, pick it up. Next up is my Anime Limited movie collection. These are all movies where I can just kind of well, they're all anime limited and they all go kind of well together on a shelf so let's take a closer look into some of these shall we so first up we have vampire hunter d bloodless absolute classic anime movie Vampire Hunter D, I think the first one was one of the very first anime movies I remember watching. And Bloodlust is just a fantastic title. That Again, it's weird because I see a lot of people hyping up titles like Berserk and Vinland Saga, but not many people seem to pick up like a lot of these traditional classic anime movies, which is a huge shame. I had a huge love for this movie when I rewatched it at the beginning of the year. Um, I actually watched it on the back of Castlevania Season 2, which I didn't like as much. And this one kind of reminded me of what I really loved about Vampire Hunter D. It was just a fantastic series. Uh, I really am tempted after watching this to pick up um, Hellsling, because I know the Manga UK have just re-released Hellsling, so I'm kind of tempted with that. Um, but we'll see. Um, I've got a lot of movies and anime still to watch, so yeah. But yeah, um, if you're into classic anime, this is one is definitely should be on your radar. It's often pops up on anime limited deals. I think I paid $7.99 for this, so you can you can get it pretty cheap pretty easily. To be fair. Next up is a movie that, dear God, I can't even tell you what this was even about. Mind Game is simply the most screwed up movie I've ever watched, but it is absolutely fantastic. The creator would go on to create titles such as Night is Short, Walk on Girl, um, The Tatami Galaxy, and plenty of others. Uh, Lure of the Wall is another one, and we will be talking about a lot of them later on as we go on with this. But Mind Game is certainly a movie that you can see you've watched. That's all I can say about it. I can see I have watched Mind Game. If you're going to watch it, focus on it because it's one of those ones if you blink you'll just not understand what's going on I remember watching it the first I've watched it about three times I think and I still can't tell you what the plot was about it was just so screwed up but a fantastic title next up is Patima Inverted or Patima Inverted I don't know again another one that um, I picked up this one quite cheap and I remember when I think it was, was it when it came. I think it came like that. I was, it might be the collector's edition. The collector's edition kind of flips it because, yeah, it's um, it's about an upside down girl. I think that's the right way, isn't it? That that must be the right way to put it. I don't know. 
Um, again, another one that I really enjoyed and I really do need to rewatch it. I know um, Screen Anime have this one currently on for their ongoing releases, so I need to rewatch it because I did really enjoy it. Um, me and my mates have been watching a lot of anime movies, so I might actually recommend this one next because it's one of those ones I really enjoyed, but I kind of forgot about it. Um, again, yeah, um, yeah, this is the right way to put it. I'm sure it is, which means mine is upside down. Uh, I don't know. Next up is that movie that I feel that everybody needs to watch a silent voice. Um, I know a lot of people absolutely adore the manga. Um, the anime makes me cry every single time. Uh, I watched this not long after I watched Yonium in the cinema and just like everybody was just, like blubbering in the cinema and it's a hard one to rewatch. Um, I I really struggle to rewatch it. Not because it's bad, but because when I rewatch it, it's like you know the stuff that's going on ahead of time, and you kind of get I, at least I get a quite. A, I cry at anything. I cry. I cry when like something happy happens in like, a, a happy series, you know. But it's like, yeah, um, it's one of those ones where it's like. Yeah, I'm. I would recommend everybody re -watch, uh, watch this at some point. Interestingly enough, I've never been motivated to pick up the manga. I probably should. Have, I think it's one of those ones. It's like I don't like. I don't mind watching anime that will make me cry, but manga, I feel that it's a lot more of a struggle if I know that I'm kind of putting myself through it. Which is why I stopped um, reading To Your Eternity by the same creator. It was a fantastic series, but I kind of felt that like I was kind of being a misogynist by watching it and yeah, yeah. Next up is Giovanni's Island. Oh God, um, yeah. Yeah, Giovanni's Island. Um, this has got a bit of a misleading um, cover, I would say, because if I remember rightly, she appears very little. This is another one that will be on your shelf alongside In This Corner of the World, uh, Barefoot Gain, um, Grave of the Fireflies, I think was another one very similar in this kind of the mood and the atmosphere. Um, yeah, again, it's another one I've not watched in a long time and I would really like to rewatch it because I really did. In fact, I believe this was one of the very first anime limited titles that they put out. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic, really fantastic title. Uh, um, I don't think many people kind of uh, talk about it though. But yeah, um, I found, yeah, check it out. Next up is another one that, um, again, I don't hear anybody talking about this, and that is My My Miracle, and yeah, um, it has a different box to the rest of everything else. I picked this up on a whim at MCM Comic Con Manchester at one point. I believe originally this was a Kickstarter, and then eventually they did a Kickstarter version, and then they just kind of released it normally. I think it was, ex I don't know if it's exclusive to Anime Limited's online store. Or what, but again, this is another fantastic series that um, series movie that I don't hear anybody talking about, and I really loved it. Um, and you know, a lot of, doing this this video has really made me want to rewatch a lot of my older um, DVDs. I think I'm going to have to have an anime movie weekend and just binge a lot of this stuff because, yeah, this has got me really wanting to rewatch a lot of these. Too much anime, not enough time, especially when you've got light novels and manga to force in this as well. After this is Penguin Highway. I've not even opened this, which has been annoying for me because I tend to buy anime limited titles straight away as soon as they come out. As soon, if I want it, I, I, I'll buy it. And then nine times out of ten, by the time I come round to watching it, it gets reduced. Penguin Highway was an interesting title that I watched at Scotland Loves Anime a few years ago. And it is created by the same person who wrote... The Tatami Galaxy and The Night is Short, Walk on Girl. There is a light novel which I bought and I have not read. Or is it a novel? And that's why I haven't watched this because I wanted to read the novel and then watch the movie to kind of see what kind of happened. Because, I don't know, I have this thing about when I... I like to read the titles before I watch them, so I can kind of just go, oh yeah, this was adapted and I'm getting the full story. Whereas, if it goes the other way, I have less motivation to read something after I've watched it, especially when I'm rereading 
you know, the boring bits, but Penguin Highway, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, um, but I think it might have just been that I was tired at the, at the Scotland Loves Anime. I think this was like the last movie we watched or something. But yeah, um, um, I enjoyed it enough and I am looking forward to a rewatch. Oh god, so fireworks, um, or is the fireworks, fireworks doesn't look round from the top or from the side or something stupid. So imagine watching your name and then having a title thrown at you billed as the next your name. You get fireworks. And quite frankly, because it was billed as a your name kind of successor, a lot of issues I can it's not that it's a bad movie it's just kind of it's an okay movie and I feel that a lot of my issues is that I was kind of expecting something fantastic like your name or silent voice and then it was kind of I watched it and I was just like yeah um yeah um the reason I got this was because it was in the anime limited um clearance box um quite some time ago and I was just like, yeah, um, I'm going to pick this up. And I was just like, you know what? I think it worked out that I paid up a four pound for it. I was like, you know what? I, I For four quid, it's a good punt. It's a good it's a good enough title for four quid. Just don't expect anything fantastic. It's a nice one if you just kind of want to have something on in the background and you don't really want to focus on something, but you kind of want to watch an anime. Yeah, that's the kind of fireworks. Um, fireworks, that's the kind of movie fireworks is. Next up is Macria when the promised flower blooms. So, all I remember from Macria is that at the end of the cinema run, um, at the end of the, the movie, nobody was not crying. Everybody was crying. Like, literally, you were sat there watching, trying to hold back tears, and everyone, like, here's this one. <laughs> And honestly, that that's all I remember from the movie. And again, this falls into a silent voice kind of thing where I like, I picked it up because I loved the movie. The movie was absolutely fantastic, and I just can't bring myself to watch it. <laughs> it's like one of those ones. Like, I really loved the movie, but I just can't bring myself to watch it. I get mixed up with what happened in this one and what happened in. Um, Mary and the Witch's Flower, I believe it was called, because they both, I think they were both within a week with each other, they both had the, the letter M as the title, and I think they kind of had similar plots, I don't remember, um, but yeah, um, fantastic movie, and the fact that this and I think Mirai, a few years ago were not in the Crunchyroll Awards, while the god-awful, absolute rubbish My Hero Academia movie was on, and not only was on, won it, is an absolute insult to anime on a whole. I don't care if you like My Hero Academia, you're wrong. That was an absolute garbage movie that will not be appearing in this anime list. <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 personal opinions in part... Uh, the fact that these weren't even nominated, I kind of like that spoke volumes for the Crunchyroll Awards that year for me. And I, I know it's not a, it's an, it's an obscure title, but of course the popular title was going to win. But no, the the idea for me behind the Crunchyroll Awards was to kind of give some attention to movies that should be picked up and not um and shouldn't be flying under the radar for the the this year's. My Hair Academia movie, which we knew was going to be popular anyway, but yeah, not not biased in the slightest with that one. <laughs> Next up is a movie that I didn't like, and again, it's another one that I feel like deserves a rewatch. But Miss Hokusai was a title that it got an anime limited ultimate edition, and I absolutely loved the look of the ultimate edition. And I picked this up because they did a bundle, or they did something um, like really cheap. Where I paid, I think it was like five quid per volume or whatever, five quid per DVD. And I watched it, and I was just like, you know what? I didn't enjoy it. It's not a bad movie. Again, it's n n none of these are bad movies. But I don't know what, I think I was expecting something else. And I think maybe if I rewatched it under the knowing what this is going to be, I'll know 
what to kind of look at, but yeah, um, it's yeah, it it's an art form, not a genre. I think that's the best way to look at it, and it is a beautiful movie. I was just a bit bored with it, to be fair. That's all it was. I think I was just quite bored when I was watching it, but yeah, um, if you can get cheap, I suppose, worth worth watching. I would definitely w w recommend watching it for the visuals alone. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I really feel like I need to go back and uh, watch it. Uh, I kind of, you know, I kind of want to talk more about anime. I'm kind of like looking through these and it's like, oh, there's so many animes that I, I, I would love to talk about. Maybe I, I should become uh, that, what, that E and his anime. That asshole and his anime. That's what, I, that, that's what my spin-off channel is going to be called. You know, apart from that human and his hentai. Last up on this batch is The Empire of Corpses, and as you can see, I've not watched it because, yeah, this was the Project Ito. This is the second one, Anime Limited, released, and I picked this up for two ninety nine. And I didn't like the first Project Ito movie, and I didn't like the third one, um, Genocidal Organ, when I went to see it at the cinema. And this one's kind of been on my shelf for some time, and I'd say, I went through a phase, I was like, you know what, I'm going to watch all of this anime that I'm not fussed about, that I picked up cheap, and then I'm just going to sell it. And I still haven't bothered to watch this movie. And maybe it's fantastic, maybe it's a whole new amazing title that I've just never watched, but I just can't be bothered to watch it, and that I feel like bad for me but if you've watched it let me know is is it worth is it worth me I'm gonna watch it eventually I mean you know I'd say I don't need it's 100 this that was what it is the problem was is that's 120 minutes and every time I put an anime on I've either got like an hour and a bit or something like that so it's like 120 minutes it's like I can't sit and watch anime like for 120 minutes yeah next up we have Hidamari Sketch Season 1. I don't remember ever watching this. I um, I got this in an MVM um, blind box a few years ago and I don't remember ever watching it but I do remember a lot of people saying it was really good. So I am looking forward to eventually checking it out. Um, it's one of those ones where it's just like it looks so cute and looks so adorable but I think that I don't believe um, it's not dubbed or anything like that so I was like what's well, one of those ones where I was like oh I would probably have watched it if it was dubbed and I don't really believe in the whole dub versus sub thing um the reason I do like to have some dubbed is because if I just kind of feel like having something on in the background I don't really really want to watch it it's a lot easier to stick a dub on and kind of half watch it than it is to watch a sub where you've kind of you always got to focus on it next up is Samurai Champloo, this is an absolute classic and this is one of the very first anime I picked up when I started buying anime again. Um, so a little bit of brief history is that I used to collect um, some older DVDs, I got like Full Metal Panic and Love Hina and a few other ones years ago and then I got out of anime and then I got back into it, thanks High School of the Dead. Thanks. And then I started getting some here and there, and I try, I kind of went with the classics that I could get at the time. One of which was Samurai Champloo, and you know what? I remember quite enjoying it years ago, but I've not watched it since. And I'm kind of thinking again, much like everything else on this list, I'm kind of like, oh, I wouldn't mind re-watching it. I've got a thing though, I kind of feel like I need to uh, watch something new before I re-watch stuff. But again, this is another one that I probably will just stick on in the background and re-watch very shortly. Another title, again, I got. I think I got them both of these at the same time. Um, I was uh, FLCL or Fooly Cooly, and uh, again, this is another one that is an absolute classic. And I, I think it was, it was like six ninety nine. It was something ridiculously cheap. But again, it's one of those ones I feel like everybody probably has seen them, or a lot of people have seen them. If you've been watching anime for quite some time, I know they did a FLCL Progressive, which I've never heard anybody ever talking about. I think it was like limited to YouTube or something ridiculous like that. But uh, yeah, this is a classic one. And again, another one I, I look forward to re-watching. I've never watched uh, this one since originally picking it up. Probably about six or seven years ago now. That's right. Um, uh, 
2012, 2013, I think I got back in anime, so yeah, it's uh, it's been quite some time. I, I think this really deserves a rewatch. Um, maybe I'll start uh, rewatching them and then doing little videos on them or something, maybe, because hey, I've become an anime tuber. Next up is, no matter how I look at it, it's you guys' fault I'm not popular, otherwise known as Watermote. This was a title that I held off for so long before buying. I picked up the manga and absolutely loved it. It's one of the titles that got me into buying manga. And this one, it's just a nice adaptation. Obviously, it, does, it only goes into the first four or five volumes or so, but it is a nice adaptation and it is one that I am, I do enjoy just sticking on and just having a bit of fun with it because it's a very easy watch. Next up is my Girls and Panzer collection. Girls and Panzer is easily one of my favourite titles of all time. I expected it to be absolutely nothing, but it was so stupidly fun. So we've got Girls and Panzer, the complete TV series. We have Girls and Panzer, the real Anzio battle over here. And we have Girls and Panzer, the complete OVA series. So basically these are kind of the main series. And then we've got Girls and Panzer, the film, which is easily... If I ever feel down or anything and I want a, a little bit of a pick-me-up, Girls and Panzer, the film, is the one that I always go with because it's just fun. It's It's girls in tanks shooting girls in tanks and it's just ridiculous it's over the top and it's got a flying tank in that's right they have a tank that flies at one point but yeah it's this whole series it's like it's like one of these ones where it's just like i just never thought anything much of it until i actually watched it and it quickly became one of my firm favorites there's just so much about this series that i absolutely love and i will someday do a huge video on maybe the complete history on girls and panzer because it is so worth it the time next up we have the complete series of cells at work well season one anyway again this is another one that i really enjoyed the anime when it first came out a few years ago and then I kind of I kind of dropped off it a little bit and I read the manga and I really enjoyed the manga it took me a while before I really decided I wanted to rewatch it and fortunately MVM were rare putting this out and I think it was, I got it quite cheap I think it was like 20 quid or something like that so I picked uh, this one up uh, cheap and I watched it again I was like you know what this is a fantastic series and one that I find weird, it's like a lot of people seem to like it, but it doesn't seem to, I feel that's, feel that's kind of underrated. It's a, it's a really fantastic series about um, being inside your body and everyone's just like, oh, it's Osmosis Jones and then they'll go promote their series that's based off like Harry Potter or something like that. Because hey, you know, it's not anime tuber without insulting another anime tuber. But yeah, Cells at Work is a lot of fun. I really like the way they yeah, worked with it and did a lot of great stuff. It's not only yeah, like be entertaining, but it also manages to teach you some stuff as well. So yeah, a great, great series. Another one which I got cheap and I expected so little of was Girlish Number. Um, before we talked about uh, Shiro Bako, which was about the anime industry, this is... Um, basically about girls who want to get into the anime industry but it's the voice actresses so yeah they're the they're voice of voice actress and voice and people who want to be voice actresses i suppose but yeah again this is another one that um it flew under so many radars and i heard a few good whispers about it and i i think i think i paid like 10 quid it, was, it went on an mvm deal and i was just like once i picked it up i really really enjoyed it it was a really good time so yeah it was one of those ones that yeah um if you want an underrated title i would really recommend this one because it is a really fantastic one Next up, we have some trash, and these are titles that aren't really ranked highly, but I still had a lot of fun with. First up is Bakuon. This is the Cute Girls on Motorbikes uh, anime series, and yeah, I really enjoyed this. I'm not going to lie. It's one of those ones where people are just like, oh, it's a guilty pleasure. Oh, it's trash, but you know what? If you enjoy something in a series, and if it's got something that you would maybe say, oh, I'll rewatch this, 
that is not a bad series to you. Um, I kind of understand why a lot of people don't like this series. It's nothing amazing. It's kind of outclassed by, say, Girls and Panzer or uh, Laid Back Camp and stuff like that. But it does have a lot of fun and there is a lot of really good moments in this. Um, I'm trying to see, yeah, there's a, there's a masked girl who uh, never takes off her masks and goes on a motorbike. This ran in the same magazine as Berserk did. This is also a seinen. Yeah, do with that information what you'd like. And finally in this little collection I have is And You Thought There Is Never A Girl Online The Complete Series. Yeah, this is complete and utter trash. Um, this is one of these ones I remember. MVM picked up this license from Universal. Universal at one point were doing releases over in the UK. They got like two volume, two or three releases out and then just kind of went, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. And then MVM picked up their, their catalog that they didn't put out. But yeah, um, this is one of those that again, much like Bakuan and girlish number, um, I picked these up for like next to nothing. I, they, they were so cheap. Um, I think they were like £10 each and you know what if you can watch a series and get £10 worth of enjoyment out of it that is a well worth picking that up. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it but if you want another hard, no, it's not hard, I'm saying, if you want another etchy trash with a vague online um, presence um, you probably gonna enjoy this one uh, maybe all three of these are probably I would probably say they're quite a little bit more underrated than I think people give it out but I would probably say yeah seven out of ten is probably I would probably maybe give this one an eight but sevens out of tens yeah that's about what I would probably expect for these kind of ones maybe a six out of ten because yeah they're not they're not amazing but they're not bad but yeah definitely check out girlish number if you can Next up in a new batch of a uh, ones, when I say new batch, it's a shelf, is Time of Eve the movie. I picked this up a few years ago along with the light novel and I just never had the time to watch it. Anime Limited put it out as a kind of a random thing and you know what, I was just like, oh, I wouldn't mind watching that. Um, a lot of people really hyped it up uh, who were in the anime community at the time when it came out and I was like, you know what? It's worth a punt. I think it was like 20 quid for this plus the light novel, so it's like 10 quid each. Yeah, um, I'm more than happy to give a shot on that. And yeah, it's uh, it's been on my shelf. I believe it's the same creator as Patima Inverted, if I'm re remembering rightly. And it's one of those ones that I'm really looking forward to checking out. Again, another movie there. I kind of was just like, oh, I really can't wait to watch it. But yeah, um, never had the chance. If you've watched it, let me know in the comments what you think of it. And yeah, because I'd really like to uh, try it out. Next up is an American import of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I love this series so much. It's so fun and so stupid. So yeah, it's got a slipcase. Unlike nearly every single one of these anime. Actually, the, these are kind of the, my Manga UK collector's editions, kind of. Um, in America, nearly every single uh, anime seems to come out with a, a slipcase. But this was region free, so I got this about two or three years ago now. When it was looking that we would never get it as a Manga UK release or a UK release. Now Manga UK have announced that we're going to be getting it later on this year, probably to coincide with season two. But yeah, um, that's fine by me. Um, I, it's one of those ones I'd say, I don't mind important stuff if it's series that I'm probably never going to get rid of. If it's series that eventually I might get rid of, like maybe, oh, I'm, I'm, if I need space and money, I might have to sell Girlish Number and Bako on. But yeah, Miss Copy Edge's Dragon Maid, if I'm going to start thinning out my collection, it's probably not going to be a series I'm going to get rid of because, again, this is like the pure slice of life that I can just stick on and I can just have a lot of fun with it. It's a, it's a stupid, char yeah, charming. It's very charming. It's a charming series. Series. But yeah, it's um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this one. Next up is Food Wars Seasons 1 and Seasons 2. Shokageki no Soma. And this is the first one in a few releases that MVM, M 
Mangi Yuki did under their Anamatsu label. They did some really lovely high quality slip cases with some collector's editions. I mean, let's face it, normally you'd just get this, but it's got a special box. And you know what? I mean, look at that. I mean, there's some really, really, um, yeah some really lovely uh, art cards and stuff like that which to be fair I mean I'm not huge on art cards and stuff like that but I always feel like I get my money's worth a little bit more if you get an art card or something like that with it as opposed to just you know a box a box a box but yeah Food Wars is that series that I absolutely love this series and um, this was one of the series it, it was really important to me and I really want to do a really good video on it sometime for the manga um, I own a lot of the manga digitally and yeah it did drop off at after the kind of the main arc kind of ended and it kind of went gone for a little bit longer but yeah this is still a fantastic series and I love this collector's edition or Whatever. And then Mangi Yuki went and ruined it by releasing season two and yeah. Look look how nicely that goes on your shelf next to rare season one. They kind of just threw it together with a rare slipcase and it's like yeah. Not quite as good. So what's interesting is this was when Mangi Yuki was getting a lot of Sentai stuff. So the Sentai stuff under Animatsu was just so yes, yeah, so, yeah, Sentai stuff was going getting released under Animatsu. Um and yeah, um, we got Food Wars Season 2 a few years ago and we're still waiting for Season 3. I think Season 4 or 5 or something going on at the moment. But yeah, I, I would love for Manga UK to go back and release more of these. Even if they're kind of in the same fe feeling as the old ones because it's Food Wars. And yeah, I mean, I, I like Food Wars and I'd like to buy more of it. Continuing on with the Animatsu Limited Editions is In This Corner of the World. This is an absolute beauty, and I mean a beautiful film. I absolutely love it, and I am more than happy to have picked up the collector's or the limited edition of this, because, yeah, this is an absolute fantastic... When you know what I was, I was talking about, My Mind Miracle, I believe this is the one that, the, the, that um, was by the same creator as My My Miracle. But yeah, this is an absolute fantastic title and it's really beautiful about um, a young woman who is, um, she lives in the next town over from Hiroshima and during the war. So yeah, you kind of like, it's kind of like, it's kind of obviously this, this whole thing, there's been so many anime movies and so many Western movies about the war, but there's, there's very few that kind of just have it kind of as a little ordinary person just in a corner of the world where war is going to reach them but uh, yeah it's a um, beautiful title and I would 100% if you, I would definitely recommend this to anybody who loves animation as a whole because this is an absolute fantastic series that I feel series movie that I feel like everybody should watch Next up is School Live or School Live. Um, this is another one that I really should pick up the manga for. I think I got volume one in a uh, loot anime box or something like that. But a few years ago they released this and I think I got it when I was on holiday and I really enjoyed it. Except I can't rewatch it because of this dog. <laughs> and those of you who have seen the series will know exactly why I um, I it's got the DVDs on I, I really don't like when um, they used to or they, I think they still do they used to release a series where they used to have the Blu-ray and the DVD in, and it was like yeah you could have probably just knocked five quid off this and just released it as a Blu-ray only but yeah it's got the DVD but again another really nice collector's edition um, about zombies about a, a bunch of girls who live in this uh um, run down school and they're trying to um, defend themselves from zombies and this girl just thinks she's at school and she's obviously got trauma and stuff like that it's really really good next up we have Himoto Umaru-chan the complete collection or at least part one a volume one even season one and um, this was related by Mangyuki and MVM have season two except they're taking a while with season two um annoyingly 
Um, I know season two, I don't think it's even out in America yet, so that's why we still haven't gotten it, but it's still kind of like, ah, oh, years after an announcement. Himoto Umaru-chan is just a fun series. It's one of those ones where you can kind of like, you can sit back, you can relax, and just have a nice little fun time with it. And yeah, I would really recommend it if you like um, Slice of Life game and stuff, which is also a seinen. So yeah, this is another one that uh, ran alongside Berserk. And yeah, it's a, it's a fun fun title. Um, if you like kind of geeky stuff and annoying little sisters, definitely check this one out. Look at the time, it's magic hour. Or, yeah, whatever. And Maggie Brilliant Park is the series that really got me loving anime again. Another Kyo Annie that really, as far as I'm concerned, goes under the radar. This one just looks stunning. It's got a lot of really nice visuals, and a lot of really fun characters. And honestly, it's one of my favorite series of all time. I just don't think that this one gets enough recognition. Um, they are actually going to, I said they are, um, I am actually reading the light novel of this at the moment and I really feel that I, this is going to be deserving of a complete uh, history of at some point because yeah I really really love this series. Next up and finally for the ones that we're going to cover today is My Love Story, a limited edition. Again another one by Animatsu Manga UK, another series that I feel doesn't get the um, the recognition it should. It's a really beautiful romance series that uh, I absolutely adore. This guy is just like, he's like a gentle giant and uh, she's like all tiny and it's You'd expect like the most of the series to be revolving around this guy and her, but yeah, it's 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 so pure and adorable. I love this series. Next up, we have more anime, and that anime is Matoi, the Secret Slayer. Another title that I picked up in an MVM box set, and I haven't watched. I've heard some really bad things about it, and some really good things about it. Um, I haven't bothered to watch it yet. It's another one that is kind of like, yeah, um, I picked it up in a bundle and I just never really had the interest to watch it. I'm sure it'll be fun enough or it could be absolutely terrible. I don't know. But yeah, it's in my collection until I either watch it or just sell it on. Next up is another one called Skip Beat. Popular shoujo title or popular romance title and honestly I watched the first few episodes and I didn't really like it. Um, probably it's just not to my taste. I was just kind of bored. I was just I just really didn't enjoy what I watched. Maybe I, I was going through a bad time at that moment, but uh, yeah, um, I really didn't like it. Uh, although I did like it a lot more than the Midsummer one, which I had previously and I thought was absolute garbage. But yeah, uh, Skip Beat is certainly a thing I've watched, uh, but I haven't got around to selling it yet. Also, this girl looks quite a bit like Nami from One Piece. Yeah, she certainly does. Next up is, this is the UK release of Heaven's Lost Property. This is an etchy title, through and through. I've not watched this version. I actually own all of Heaven's Lost Property um, in American, but I've never actually watched the UK one. Again, it was in the, uh, the MVM bundle, so it's kind of like, I was like, oh, I fancy re-watching that. I was like, oh, I can't be bothered. And um, Basically, an angel falls down from heaven and... She's got big boobs and um, this guy is really perverted. He's basically Kazuma from Konosuba. And yeah, um, underwear starts flying away. Because yeah, if you like Konosuba, I would really recommend checking this one out. Uh, it is like kind of along the same comedy as Konosuba in some ways. Except the girls are actually useful. Yeah. Next up is Love and Lies. Another one I have not watched because yeah it's in that MVM bundle it's uh, it's I'm sure if I remember rightly it's where the kind of like he likes her but she likes her and he likes him and it's all kind of a big orgy kind of thing yeah yeah 
Next up is another one again, MVM Sakura Trick uh, Classic Yuri title. I would probably say. I watched the first episode on Crunchyroll and I picked this up for like six ninety nine or something ridiculous cheap. So yeah, um, it's in my collection. But again, not watched it properly. Can't really talk about it. And the last of the MVM bundles is Non 9. I remember this being really hyped up when it got released by MVM and then was in the MVM bargain bucket. Again, another one. I think this is a boy love title, potentially. Um, I have no idea. A mysterious mission. A mystery girl. Mystery girl? Mystery girl. A rendezvous of destiny. Um, actually, it might not even be boy love. It might just be a romance. It's just obviously with all three guys on and no girls. You can't really tell these days. But again, it's another one I'll probably watch it at some point and then get rid of it. Next up is time for more anime limited collector's editions. First up is Amanchu. Fun for all, all for fun. And you know what? When I was first getting into anime, I thought this was Yotsuba. That's right. She's kind of like a grown up girl, Yotsuba. This is uh, the diving anime except that other diving anime that released. And yeah, um, Deep Sea Diving, I really like this series. It was really beautiful. It was it was kind of sad in a way. It's about a young girl where she obviously she moves to the new town and she doesn't know anybody and then there's this kooky, crazy girl. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I would really recommend checking this one out at some point. Anime Liberty did really well for these as well. Um, give you a load of nice little stickers and stuff like that. And stickers are always cool. I mean, I never use them, but stickers are always cool. I think actually I used um, some of these from my suitcase when I went to Japan just to kind of uh, mix things up a little bit. But yeah, Amanchu is a really fun title. I would 100% recommend people check out. Next up is one of my favorite favorite series of all time prison school ah oh, this i i was so happy when we finally got the collector's edition of this because yeah this is a f it's just so good uh, i've done so much on prison school over the last uh, few months that i don't really need to explain it to you but just look at it look at that all of that 3d gloriness yeah I really enjoyed the way that I actually put this uh, Prison School Collector's Edition together. It was so much fun. And there's a lot of nice, there's a nice interview in there which I actually used when I um, I did the complete history from of Prison School. Uh, I used some of the stuff in there because there's a lot of facts in there that doesn't really get brought up elsewhere. Always good to have. Next up is a movie that I genuinely adored. I went to see this like three times in one weekend <laughs> and that was Mirai. Um, I can't remember the full name of it's called. I think it's on, is it on the back? Mirai no Mirai. This is really fun. Uh, about a young boy who he's he's always been like the solo child in the house and then a newborn baby comes into the house and he's trying to kind of like keep his parents attention while also looking after his younger sister uh, if you have ever been an older brother an older sister you will probably get some kind of uh, value out of this but i love this is such a beautiful movie really underrated as well i would really recommend people check this one out next up is oh the absolutely beautiful release of re-zero starting life in another world and look at that Look at that, you've got the best girl on the spine to always watch you from your anime collection. This includes, well it doesn't include, obviously this you got with the part two, but this is the first and second half of the series. So yeah, always love ReZero, I really love ReZero. In fact now Konosuba is the only one out of the Isekai Quartet that I don't actually own. Which is a huge shame. But yeah, uh, I love this collector's edition of ReZero. It's absolutely amazing. Just everything about it just looks so good. Next up is Season 1 and Season 2 of Silver Spoon. Another series that if you've been watching my anime videos you will know all about this series. I've spoke about it at great length 
fantastic series. I love. I actually like this more than Full Metal Alchemist, which I actually do have in my anime collection, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, it, it's just because I prefer Slice of Life, and to be honest, both are great series. I just like this one a little bit more. There's just a lot more going on. I really hope we get a season three that finishes off the uh, the rest of the story because that would be a crime if we didn't. But look, I mean, these are just beautiful sets. Absolutely beautiful. Visually stand out as well on the shelf. It's just really nice. It's a, uh, Anime Limited, I always find Anime Limited pull out the full stops when it comes to uh, anime releases. Really love their stuff. Next up is, well, we talked about this one a little bit before, and that is Keijo, the complete series. Yeah, I love this series so much. It's so stupid, but it's very, um, how would you see, I don't know, it's kind of like, it's very enlightening. It's, um, uh, it's, it, it, it is an etchy, but it's like, I love how it's kind of, kind of like empowering. I would maybe see it. It's very empowering in the kind of way it's like, oh yeah, um, we can do these and we can do that. And it's, I really like the way it was done. Plus it was absolutely hilarious. Hilarious series. Um, I'm really disappointed we never ever got the manga in English. I know the kind of series. I mean, really this series was done dirty. It, it was kind of on its way out. And then the anime was kind of sent out to die, they were basically told, it was like, oh, you're getting an anime, but uh, it's going to end anyway. And then it ended, the anime ended up being really popular in the West. I remember seeing Crunchyroll showing off, and this was when it was going up against, like, March Comes In, like, Alliance, Sound Euphonium, and Yuri on Ice. Keijo was, like, more popular than, like, Yuri on Ice in some areas. And I thought that was quite ironic because it was just like, oh yeah, this series that was actually doing really well in the West ended up being doing really bad in the East and got killed off for it. And quite frankly, if it was like, I'm surprised it kind of ended up like that. We never got a UK release for this, shockingly. Um, this was one of those ones where it kind of just dropped into the void of everything when Funimation took over Manga UK and I doubt we'll ever get a UK release, but I like this enough to actually pick it up in American. I've never watched it since, though. I probably should sit down and rewatch it. Um, someday. Someday I will. Next up is Martian Successor Nadesico, the complete collection. I'm not going to lie. I loved Martian Successor Nadesico, the TV series. However, I got all the way to the end, and there is a movie which I've never watched. Um, I don't know why, I, I really enjoyed the series, but I think as it went on, I kind of got a little bit fatigued with it. Um, I am going to try and re-watch it, because I do remember absolutely loving it. And then I can watch the uh, the movie, because it, it was an easy it was an easy watch. But yeah, um, really enjoyed this series, and I was really happy when Anime Limited went out and picked it up. And we've got some nice art cards and some stickers. So yeah, it's it's a really nice collection. And really, it's just one of those ones that uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I went in blind, and to show how popular this one actually was, they were selling it at um, Kitacon. And by the time I even got to the stall, the day they were selling it, it had sold out. It was that. People jumped on it that much. So yeah, um, fantastic series. Uh, and doesn't get enough love. I don't hear anything about it, really. Next up is March Comes In Like a Lion Part 1 and March Comes In Like a Lion Part 2. I've not watched this all the way through. I always get so far into this, I always get into the second half of it, and then I just stop watching it for whatever reason, and then don't watch it for ages. But I absolutely love this series. It's an absolute beautiful, fantastic series. Unfortunately, mine got a little bit damaged. Uh, I picked it up um, when I was in London, and it got a bit damaged on the way back, which is a huge shame. But yeah, um, beautiful, beautiful releases here. Absolutely stunning. But yeah, it's a fantastic release. I would really recommend people check this one out. I think it's on Netflix now, so no excuse to not read it. No excuse to not watch it. 
So yeah, check it out. Next up we have Hyoka and this is part one and part two. Again released by Anime Limited and this was another one. This one really, I love this series. I didn't expect much from it but I really liked it. Um, I think I kind of got into it because I know Shoji Gato had some involvement on it. And that's what kind of made me want to check it out. Well, I'd never heard of it before, and even just by looking at it, I would never have picked this one up if it wasn't for a lot of people hyping it up online. But again, this was one that got done quite, not dirty, but uh, Anime Limited got it. I feel like they kind of got screwed with it because Hyoga Part 1 came out, and it was out for a long time. I would say it was probably out for about a year. And then Season 2 came out, or Part 2 came out, and that was out for release for not long until they lost the Funimation license and then they could no longer sell their Funimation titles. And Hyoko was one of those titles where it had just been out, it had just been out for a little amount of time and then kind of got taken off. And it's a huge shame because this one is some a title that I can never see getting another release. I can see Prison School and stuff like that will be getting another release, but like this, I don't think will ever get re-released. It's just a huge shame because it's a fantastic series. I absolutely loved it. It's actually one I'm kind of like on the cusp of wanting to rewatch again. Actually, I can, I can watch it over and over again and never get bored of it. It's really, really fun, and it's it's nice. I really like the. Um, like the, the the mystery element to it. It's not like a massive mystery, but it's a it's something kind of like yeah, you can kind of enjoy it and just in it's like little small mysteries and curious and stuff like that. But yeah, really enjoyed this one. Next up is a series that I will buy and buy and buy again, and that is Full Metal Panic. I actually own this twice on Blu-ray. This is the re-release. Um, what happened was Anime Limited released a huge, massive Ultimate Edition, which I will show you uh, probably towards the end of the video. But they released a huge, massive Ultimate Edition, which was huge and massive, and had all parts one, two, and three on. And then um, they re-released it all for like next to nothing. Like, really next to nothing. I paid over hundred pound for the Ultimate Edition, and I think this got re-released for like fifteen pounds or. Might have been 20 or something like that, and yeah, I was really annoyed with that, but it, it's a series that I will always watch. I watched this series so many times, and it was the one that really got me into anime. Um, it was the one that got me into anime, really. It's, I love it that much. <laughs> but yeah, it's a fantastic series that I would really recommend everybody check out at some point. Next up is this beautiful collector's edition of Eden of the East. I'm not going to lie, I've had this for a few years and I've still never watched it. I remember watching, I think I had part one maybe uh, on DVD a long time ago and I started watching it but I never really kind of got into it. It's one that I dare not sell because, not because I, I just feel like I need to watch it and I think I need to watch it properly because I know I'm going to absolutely love this when I actually sit down and watch it. It looks absolutely beautiful and the collector's edition is really nice. I, I actually got this in an anime limited bundle. I think it was um, the, 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 the very first mystery box or one of the very first mystery boxes and I remember picking it up and I was just like oh I want this but I don't know I've never done anything with it so I was just like Oh, brilliant. I own it now, and it's sat on my shelf ever since. Someday I will watch it. I know um, Zach from Uchu Shelves, uh, this is one of his favourite anime of all time, so I've got a feeling if he watches this, he's going to be banging on my door and just saying, yeah, watch it. Watch it! Because that's what the kind of guy he is. Scary. Next up is the best superhero series of all time yeah you know the one you know that massive huge popular series that broke out and broke down boundaries and punched stuff punched the air but yeah um we know we, which what title we're talking about and that title is the almighty 
Tiger and Bunny. It was popular in Japan, incredibly popular. Just kind of, it was in the wrong place at the wrong time, I would say, for over here. So this is volumes one. Volumes two. Volumes three and volume four. And do you know what the huge crime about all of this is? Is that on the covers of all of these, neither Rock Bison nor Fire Emblem even appear. This is honestly my favorite superhero series of all time. Fantastically, beautifully done. And I would definitely recommend everybody who is into superheroes to check this one out because it's doing or it did a lot of unique things that I don't think the superhero genre has even picked up on since then. The only thing I don't like is that these sets are really flimsy. The look that they've kind of aged quite badly. Um, I've had this for about six seven years now but even then I think that it was probably around 2012 or something that these started coming out I remember trying to pick these up and this was the, my first instance of buying DA Blu-rays where there were only seven episodes to a Blu-ray and I remember being absolutely so annoyed that um, I think I picked up like volume one for maybe like nine ninety nine, and then I think I might have picked up like volume three for nine ninety nine. The other two were like thirty quid because I think maybe they were out of print or they were they were still full price. But yeah, I remember paying a lot of money for these, but I do not regret it. This is a series that I will watch over and over and over again. Speaking of Tiger and Bunny, we also have Tiger and Bunny: The Rising and Tiger and Bunny: The Beginning. So after Kaze released Tiger and Bunny, it probably didn't do them much money. Um, this You've got to remember, Tiger and Bunny came out before Attack on Titan did. So if Tiger and Bunny it came out when Avengers and all of that was coming out, it would have done ridiculously well, even if it came out after... Um, Attack on Titan. It came out before, and even the Blu-rays were out, I think, before Attack on Titan had even aired, so it didn't do very well. But Anime Limited managed to pick up the license for the two movies. The beginning is essentially uh, the first two or three episodes, and then there's an extra bit on top, and the rising is basically the end. It's, like, it's after the, the anime series, so it's quite confusing. If you ever want to check out Tiger and Buddy, always look for this one. I would always recommend it if you just want to tease it because this one you can get dirt uh, cheap. I've owned Tiger and Bunny the beginning, I think about four times because nearly every single time Anime Limited do a, a blind box, you get it. I even got given it, I believe, along with Giovanni's Island at a Scotland Loves Anime one year. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I give the gift of Tiger and Bunny over and over again. In fact, I don't actually own a, copy, a spare copy of Rise. I probably would have done it as a giveaway. I'm sorry. Find your own. Next up is another title that I picked up very early on when I started buying anime. And that is Anime Limited's Blood Lad. And yeah, I don't remember much of this. I remember he was he's a zombie and she's a ghost. And that's about it. I remember really enjoying it when I watched it, but I can't remember much about it. <laughs> a fighting Blood Lad is a fighting anime done right. Blood Lad is a fighting anime done right. Wow. I can't think of any other series that's got a fighting anime done right. But I mean, maybe at this time we were kind of going under, under a lull of fighting anime, maybe. But yeah, um. I remember enjoying this, but I don't remember a thing about it. It's been a long time. I think I think it deserves a rewatch. I think it really does deserve a rewatch. Next up is Sounds like a motorcycle. That's the point. Out of the two, I like Bakanoa more than Dorara, but I remember loving season one of this. And then I picked up season two and it was absolute pure garbage and I really didn't like it. But yeah, I do love this series. Interestingly enough, it's a series that I did pick up as a light novel. 
and I really couldn't get into the light novels for Dorora. But I love season one of it. It's just so stylish and so fun. Um, yeah, it's. I, I just, it's just one of those series I think that everybody seemed to, everyone seemed to love this series at a certain point and now I, I don't hear anybody talking about it. Maybe you'll go to a convention you'll see like someone cosplaying like one of the characters but that's about it. It's kind of weird how this was so insanely popular and then kind of just disappeared off the face of the earth. Shame because it's, it's one that I would really recommend people uh, check out at some point. Next up is Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, or in this one, Grimgar, Le Monde des Centres et de Fantastique. Oh, de Fantasie. Yeah, this is Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, I believe it's called. I have, you know, I actually own volumes one, three, and four of the light novel, and I have never read it. I love this series, I really enjoyed it. And even now, I pick this one up every now and again, and it feels so nice. It feels so nice to just touch and hold in your hands. I don't know why. Grim series. Um, this is a group of people who end... I think it's a school group who get transported into another world. And they've got to survive, but it's an absolute grim series. Uh, yeah, um... I can't really talk about much without spoiling things, but I really enjoyed this series and I was really happy I managed to get the collector's edition for it as well. It comes with an absolute beautiful looking art book for it. It's just so nice. I love when we get these really nice high quality art books with stuff rather than like, you know, a pamphlet. If I see an anime collection that has got a pamphlet in, I know it's not a great anime collection, but this has got a beautiful, beautiful art book and nice case as well. Look at the artwork, it's absolutely beautiful. Next up is another series called Claymore. Now, if anyone's never seen this series, it's another series. Claymore is, again, another one I picked up real super cheap. And I really enjoyed it. Although I get to a certain point in this series, I think it's like around, I think it's like around 20, episode 20 or something like that. And I kind of start getting a little bit fatigued with it. I can't remember how many episodes it is. I can't remember if it's like 50 odd or if it's like 26 or if it's like, it's a long, it feels like a longer series than it should be. But it's one of those series that it started off really good like really fantastic and then as it went on a kind of for me it kind of dropped off I kind of lost a little bit of interest um it for those people um I'm gonna just say it out loud this is a soft saying in yeah uh, it ran in Shonen Jump I believe or was it, it was under the Shonen Jump advanced label and this is one of these ones where everyone comp like says it's like a seinen, but I believe it's actually a shonen. But yeah, it's it's still a fantastic series. Uh, I really, really want to read the manga. I believe it's actually on the Jump app. It's one of those series that I just really, really want. You know when you you know when you kind of see a series and you really want to get into it, but you kind of watch the anime and you kind of like, oh yeah, this is good, but I never touch it again. That's clear more. Fantastic series. Not for everybody, there's a lot of uh, gruesome parts in it, it's not going to be like if you like your fun kind of stuff, but it's a really fantastic series and I would recommend checking this one out if you can get a decent price. I don't know if the Claymore Special Edition is still in print or not. Um, if I don't remember ever seeing it, this is one of those ones that Anime Limited released a few years ago and I got it like, on one of their special deals, but I don't remember ever seeing it actually out in the shops to buy, It's it's kind of weird. Weird things like that. From a gruesome dark series to an absolute fun series, Lucky Star. Yeah, I, this is one of those ones again where I kind of didn't know much about it. I knew it was like stupidly popular and got the whole moe kind of cute girls doing cute things. It was kind of one of the trailblazers in that. And I never thought it was going to be any good. I really didn't like the look of it from this cover art. But I was like, you know what? Everyone hypes this up. Everyone really likes this. And I tried it and I absolutely loved it. It was hilarious. 
It's one of those series though, as, as you go on, I think it kind of, it gets less funny the more times you rewatch it. But if I'm ever stuck, if I'm ever like, uh, I can't be bothered to watch a full series like this or Umaru channel or something, something I would always stick on. It's just a lot of fun. There's a, still a lot of problematic stuff. Uh, there seems to be a weird kind of era of anime and manga. And I found this when I recently read To Love Rue, and as a manga, Daio falls into this trap as well. There's, that, there's always a character who's a straight-up paedophile, and he's always played for laughs, and I never understand why that is. It's kind of uncomfortable. Um, that's If I've got any issues with those series, it is that. Although as a manga, Daio kind of skirted around it a little bit more, but yeah... Um, yeah, this one was kind of a little bit uncomfortable at parts with that character, but overall it is still an absolute fantastic uh, series I would recommend people check out at some point. Next up is, a, I love this movie. I went to see this at Scotland Loves Anime a few years. In fact, this was our first Scotland Loves Anime. This was the very first movie we saw at Scotland Loves Anime one year. And it is one of my favourites. Lou over the wall. I just had to get this as a collector's edition because, yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic movie. Um, basically, kind of like The Little Mermaid, except with more singing and more dancing. Look at that. Look at how oh, that, that, I just love the whole art style and the whole way this was animated. If I remember rightly, it was a lot of it was done kind of like um, was it was it done. Was it done in Microsoft Paint or something? I remember seeing something like it was like it was done in like something like what you would never expect to see an anime done in. It was yeah, it was if you could find it, I would really recommend checking this one out. I don't think you can get the collector's one anymore, but the regular edition often is cheap and like HMV, you can always get it for like six ninety nine or something ridiculous, but I would really recommend putting this one in your guys' collection. And it's weird because I go from this onto Bacano. I was one of the lucky ones who managed to get the Bacano Collector's Edition uh, a few years ago. And you know what? I love this series. Again, I really feel like I need to read the light novel for this one because I really love this series. And I wanted more when I finished it, but I just never really got around to ever checking it out it's kind of weird the only thing i don't like about it is that it kind of has this whole arc and it would have been perfect if it finished out that arc and then they kind of go off and i think they have the focus on this character and it is a different arc but it's kind of like it's kind of weird because it's like pretty much all of these characters who are like are built up through the series just don't appear <laughs> it's just like oh okay um we're doing it kind of feels like a different series or a different series in the same universe or maybe like season two but it's like yeah uh, it kind of threw me off but it, it is still a fantastic fantastic series and really even just looking at this you kind of get the whole impression of like the massive huge cast of characters all done incredibly well in this i love this series and i really need to rewatch it again because it has been quite some time next up is one of my favorite series of all time and that is the tatami galaxy this series is just Wow. It's hard to explain. Uh, basically, grab life by the balls. That's what the whole story is. If you've ever... Uh, it's kind of Groundhog Day when it comes to anime. Um, Groundhog... Yeah, I would say Groundhog Day. Um, in which a uh, young man constantly tries to find his rose-tinted college life. But there is no rose-tinted college life. And... Yeah, it's all of these weird little stories, and but it's really good. It is, I, I would really 100% recommend checking it out. It is a fantastic series, and that's a blow-up doll. Or is it a blow-up doll? Or it's, a, it's like a weird doll that some guy's got. But yeah, I absolutely love this series and i need to watch it more i don't i don't watch it nearly enough but it's it is a really good series and just look at look how goofy and awesome that artwork is i love this so much next up is well we had to tell me galaxy so what's got to be next that's right the night is short walk on girl and this is the collector's edition again much like Lou over the one to Tommy Galaxy I absolutely needed to own this movie in the collector's edition it was just such a good movie really enjoyed it 
absolutely loved it and it's it's a really nice collector's edition I really like it and interestingly enough yeah we've got the protagonists from uh, Lou Over the Wall in the collector's edition they actually do appear as well in the movie I thought that was pretty cool they both both of these movies actually hit around the same time um, I believe like, one was like summer and one was like autumn kind of time but yeah they both kind of came out one after another so obviously they've got a few little nice little things that kind of cross over in it but yeah fantastic uh, movie and really good manga uh, manga light novel as well if you can find the light novel I would 100% recommend checking that out next up is Ping Pong the Animation. Interestingly enough, I picked this up like super cheap, uh, but just before it went out of print. It was one that I always seen often to buy, but it was always like 30, 40 pounds. But then I think I paid like 25 pounds for this and Tatami Galaxy and sold the Tatami Galaxy for like 17 quid. So I paid like 7 quid for this. So yay, cheap. But yeah, uh, again, this is another one that is absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this series. I really need to pick up the manga as well because it is a really good manga. It's yeah, it's it, it's one of those series that yeah, you it might put people off with the artwork and the kind of style it's done, but it is a really good series. I would really recommend to people check it out at some point. Next up is another series that I've not watched all the way through. I picked up a raised ages ago. I picked it up on a whim and I really enjoyed part one and then part two came out and I bought it and I just never got around to watching it. I hear the ending is absolute rubbish though which is a huge shame. Um, again, it, this is one of the issues I have with Anime Limited is that sometimes they will release stuff. I remember paying like 25 quid for this or 20 quid for this and it was like Episodes 1 to 6, and I was just like, oh, brilliant, and then I think part 2 came out, and I think that's episodes like 7 to 12, or something stupid like that, and I was just like, yeah, if I appeared like, I don't know, it was like a ridiculous price, it was, it was maybe like 50 quid for one 12 episode series, and something that was kind of popular at the time, yeah, I don't know what it is, I, I kind of feel like I should watch it and sell it on, but I don't know, it's, just, it's been on my collection for quite some time. Again, like I said, I really enjoyed part one, I just never really watched part two. I maybe should actually sit down and just watch it and just see I've watched the whole thing. But yeah, it's it, it's it's it was good, I felt part one was good anyway. Enough said, really. Next up is an absolute classic series in my eyes, and that is Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. This was done by Manga UK, not Anime Limited, and yeah, I've you know, I've only ever watched uh, the first gig. I've only ever watched the first season of this. Um, just because I love the series, but for some reason, in this world of having play all as an option, Manga UK seemed to put it's so you've got to click on every single episode just to watch it, the next episode. And it really kind of annoys me when I'm kind of just lying in bed trying to watch stuff. But yeah, um, season one is absolutely fantastic. I can't comment on season two, but really, for me, I really bought it for season one. I'm not going to lie. I love season one. And it's just nice to have season two as well. Um, if you've ever watched it, uh, let me know what you think of season two, because I really need to get into sitting down and watching it. Like a lot of things. Like a lot of this uh, anime collection. I've got to watch stuff. I'll watch stuff again. Next up is Seasons 1 and Seasons 2 of Assassination Classroom. Love this series. Absolutely love it. I really want to own this uh, the manga physically, but I just do not have the space for it. It's about 20 volumes, but this is literally the whole thing collected. And yep, I was one of those people who went out and bought every single part separately. And then they released it all again in a giant bundle. I think you can get now, at least you could, because I think this is another one that was a Funimation thing, kind of Stop Anime Limited. They released all of Seasons 1. They were like season one and season two, part one, part two, part one, part two. It, it, it's like a, 
it's like a 50 episode thing so I can't really complain it's still you still get like 13 episodes per volume and then at the end they released a full thing which had seasons one and seasons two all as one big bundle collection and I think that went out of print <laughs> shortly after and I was just kind of like ah uh, sometimes it appears with some of this anime just to not buy it straight away I am finding that um, but that's just the way things go that's just the way anime buying goes I suppose Phew! I've had a little bit of a break and let's go back on to more. First up is That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, Season 1, Parts 1 and Parts 2. I don't know what is, I really do not like the covers for these titles. I don't know what it, what it is, it just... They look nice, but they just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like the series. I kind of feel like it's like we could have had a whole ensemble cast or something like that, but yeah, it's just like, yeah, this character will appear like twice in the entire series, but they'll make a big deal out of it. These characters will appear like for like three episodes at the very end of the series. Yeah, um, I love this series. I really do like it. I kind of feel like it kind I don't know, it's just like, it's one of those series I love, but I, I bought them, but I, I don't know if I'd re-watch them again in a hurry. Yeah. Maybe it's just because we've, it was like last year's anime, it's like a 2019 anime, and then obviously it came out pretty much straight away. And I'm watching it again already, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, um, I like it, but I'm not, I, I'll watch it again in a few years. It's a nice, easy watch compared to most of the other Isekai, but... Yeah, it's, it's a decent enough one. I really wish we got the US box because the US got a nice huge box that kind of covers it all. Um, and I really don't like because obviously things have changed now. So we've got new uh, ratings and that just looks horrible on a shelf. I hate it. I really do hate it. Next up is one that I had to import and that is season one of Golden Kamui. I have spoke a lot about Golden Kamui. I absolutely love this series. Really underrated. Uh, the anime kind of people watch like the first episode and was like, I don't like it. It's got a CGI bearing, and then just nobody ever picked it back up. But yeah, fantastic series. I'm really disappointed that we never got this in the UK. So I ended up importing it from Australia, and wow, I hate Australia's uh, ratings. I mean, look. I mean, yeah, tiny thing in the bottom. We know what uh, age rating it is. This. Taking up so much of the of the the page or the the box, Ugh, nasty. Great series though. Next up is another series that I watched. It took me a while to watch this. Um, I watched it when it was airing, and then I was just kind of like, oh, I wasn't that fussed. But then I watched it again, and I really liked it. And that is Mob Psycho 100. If you want to check this one out, I would recommend going to your local HMV when it's safe to, and wear a mask. And because I, I picked up this for like nine ninety nine not long ago, or maybe even just before Christmas. So, yeah, it's one that um, you can get quite cheaply, but it is really, really good. I really enjoyed this series. Uh, there's not really much to see about it because I think everybody who is everybody has seen this series now. Next up is another one that I picked up on a whim. I wasn't hundred percent sure about it. I read the manga and quite enjoyed it, but I felt it would have been better as an anime, and that is Land of the Lustrous. Yeah, um, again, it's a really nice series. I don't know what it is about it, though. There's something about the CG that just feels somewhat slightly janky. It doesn't feel... The movements of the characters don't feel smooth enough that it kind of was bugging me for the entire series, but yeah, it's a decent enough series. Um... I don't really want to talk about it too much because it's like it's one of those ones where the more you talk about it, the less impressive it is. Um, visually, it's really nice, um, but yeah, it's it's just weird. It's a weird series, more weird than this, surprisingly. But yeah, it's a, it's a good enough series. Uh, I kind of not sure if I liked it enough to keep it in my collection, so I am considering selling it. To be fair. Uh, it's just because I just don't think I'm ever going to watch it ever again and if I want more of it I might just read the manga. But yeah, um, I'll, yeah, it's good enough. 
Next up, I've not watched this one, and that is Princess Principal. The reason I got this is I heard the dub is incredibly bad. They, I don't think it's Funimation, I think it's Aniplex or someone like that. But they try to do British accents, and we all know that Americans cannot do British accents. Don't even try. Uh, but yeah, I saw a few episodes of this when I was in Japan. And I really liked what I saw. So yeah, I picked it up and just never ever watched it. So yeah, it's like Victorian boarding school, but they're all spies kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's, it looks like it's a whole load of fun. I'm really looking forward to ch checking it out. Another one, again, i not watched. I've had this for a few years, and that's Wolf's Reign. Classic anime. The only thing is, is that I've got to think about dogs dying. I do not like to see a dog dying. I'm kind of thinking with this, the dog is going to die. Uh, so I'm just like, yeah, um, I probably will watch it someday because I think it's one that I feel like I need to watch. But yeah, I, again, it was another one. I It was so cheap, I couldn't afford not to pick it up at that price. But I've just never had the chance to watch it. Next up is Space Dandy about a dandy man in space. I absolutely love this series. This series is so, so much fun. Um, it's hard to explain. It's just so visually nice and just, it, uh, it's like all of the stories are self-contained so it's just nice to be able to sit and just watch them. I've watched season one like so many times, uh, it, but this includes season one and, oh, well, it's part one and part two. I have part one somewhere else. Um, as the collector's edition, but I never managed to find part two for a, d a decent price. But yeah, it's all collected here in this complete set. But yeah, well worth checking this one out. Again, like Mob, most like Mo uh, no. again like Mob Psycho, you can often find it rather cheap. So I would really recommend checking it out if you do get that chance to do so. Next up is an underrated title called Castletown Dandelion. This one was yeah. Um, it's hard to kind of like, it's kind of like, they're all like in this family, they're all like second in line for the throne, but they're making it kind of as a game kind of thing. Um, it's really nice, it's a really nice series that if you can get it quite cheap, I would really recommend checking it out. It's got a lot of nice moments in, but it's not going to be one that, it's not going to be on anybody's top 10 lists, probably. It'd probably be on somebody's, but yeah, um, again, another one that is kind of like a shelf filler in my collection, but it's one that I do really enjoy when I do watch it. Um, really underrated, I would probably say. Another movie that um, I haven't, well, I say I haven't, I have watched it. Uh, I'm just wondering, oh, the disc is in it, it just failed, it felt very light. <laughs> um, I watched this not long ago, and yeah, this one is just seriously twisted. It's a popcorn movie. It's like a B movie anime. Uh, but yeah, if you want a, like a nice horror movie and you don't mind kind of like what you watch and you can get it for quite cheap, I would really recommend uh, the Calamity of a Zombie Girl because yeah, this was just stupid. But it was stupid fun, and that's what you want sometimes. Sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes. Next up is a classic series that everybody knows about. And that is High School of the Dead, $9.99, so cheap. Um, the reason I have not watched this is because I was starting to do a complete history on High School of the Dead. Um, the reason I have the sticker on this and the reason this one isn't watched is because this has got Drifters of the Dead on. I do own, at least I did own the other version which just had the original series on. And I'm just never getting around to re-watching it. I will do sometime. It's one of those ones that you can't easily watch when there's people around. Um, I'm going to need to have a day where I'm just kind of want to chill and just like binge some anime and I'm, I'll put this on. And that's the only reason I haven't watched rewatched it in a while. You can't watch it when there's people around. It's basically porn at some points. Next up, speaking of complete uh, histories of, I did a complete history of Nichijo, My Ordinary Life, and this is an absolute hilarious series. I love this series so much, and it's one of those ones that I, I held off for so long because so many people tell me, you like, oh, this series is hilarious. Oh, you need to watch this series. Oh, you need to watch it. And I'm just like, yeah, but... Um, usually when people recommend me stuff, I watch it and I don't enjoy it as much as them. And I kind of feel bad for that. 
But yeah, this is another one where it's just like, I loved it. It's actually getting a UK release now. I picked it up uh, late last year, I think, from uh, this is the US version, but it is getting a UK release now. So when that does come out, I would 100% recommend checking it out because it is such a good series. Kiss him, not me. Hey, hey, hey. Maybe he's a tree. Hey, hey, hey. Kiss Him Not Me is the definitive series where I would show somebody and go reverse harems, fine with, but all of the boys are absolute bland as bloody hell. Jesus Christ. These were all just so boring. I hated every single one of them. I really like these two. It's one of those things that I always laugh at is it's like I find that like sometimes Guys are either really cool and badass or awesome, or they're actually interesting characters, or the these, because, yeah, these, are, like I said, the, I, I, the easiest way to kind of describe it is, if you've ever seen a series where the girls are kind of just there for fan service and they're not really that interesting, this is just the guys. The guys are just there for this girl to kind of just go, oh, kiss each other, because I don't like that. And then there's a cosplayer girl who was absolutely awesome and I absolutely, she is the best character in the entire series and the only reason I still own this. Uh, yeah, um, I, it, it's a good enough series. It's one that I remember watching and I remember just being like, yeah, I've certainly watched that, but I, it's not like something I would really 100% recommend. It's fun enough. It's one of those ones you can kind of turn your brain off, but if I compared this to Nichijo, or if I compare this to Lucky Star or Azumanga Daio or Umaru-chan or many of the others that I use to kind of turn my brain off and watch, this is low on my list and to be honest I don't really know why I still own this. It's not bad, not bad by any means, but I just really thought these characters were so incredibly boring. Which is a shame because there was a lot of really good series out there. Reverse Harems, where it does have fun, interesting male characters. Um, Uron High School, for example. But this one was just, yeah, I just didn't enjoy this very much. Or maybe I did. I don't know. I'm just winging it at this point. Speaking of fan service, speaking of absolute trash series, I have got one of the worst series in my collection, which is funny because it's the Seventy Heavenly Virtues. <laughs> So, years ago there was a series called The Seven Deadly Sins, which was renamed to The Seven Mortal Sins because people got confused with The Seven Deadly Sins and The Seven Deadly Sins. One of them was basically a hentai. One of them was The Seven Deadly Sins. Then they released a sequel called The Seven Heavenly Virtues and dear God, this is just if you want something so bad... Yeah, it's you, you. You know the quality when they've got a sense of the front of the uh, of the box. <laughs> but I got this for like three ninety nine, imported from America, and I do not regret my decision. Someday I will do a complete history on the Seventy Heavenly Virtues. <laughs> but it's such a bad. It's just like it's just porn. It is basically porn. I like how it doesn't even have like. This is why. This is why people kick off about. Um, People watching an anime which they shouldn't watch because you could pick this up and just be like, what's the age rating on this? Oh yeah, there's this this this, this tiny thing here. M A D S, what does that mean? That means absolutely nothing to me. Mad? You've got to be mad to watch this? Yeah, possibly, but yeah. The Seven Heavenly Virtues <laughs> it exists in my collection. And I would not I would not sell this for the world, but I would sell this. That shows that that shows how that shows the quality of anime that I watch. <laughs> Next up is a series that I don't hear many people talking about. And that is Samurai Flamenco. Hero will never give up, never hide, never be defeated, never accept evil. This is a fantastic series that, you know what? I have never actually watched all the way through. So I always get through this, and then I pick this one up, and I never ever watch it. I remember this one, waiting for ages for this to come out, and I don't think I ever watched it. It's one of those series that you either love or you just really don't enjoy. 
And in fact, I remember uh, Andrew Partridge, who runs Anime Limited, saying that it was one that they really expected to do really well, and then kind of just didn't. Um, I see this come up a lot when it comes into Anime Limited bundles and stuff like that. So they've obviously got a lot of stock and... Yeah, but it, I would recommend it if you like uh, Sentai, like Ultraman or Power Rangers or all of the many other ones. I would uh, definitely recommend checking this out. Uh, it's not quite Tiger and Buddy, but I yeah, it's still a lot of really good fun. Um, I really want to rewatch it. I really do because it's yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Maybe I'll maybe I'll watch it tonight. I, I kind of feel like I need to watch more anime. Another one I've never watched is Noin to your other self. I love the look of this, and you know how much I paid? Five pounds. You can imagine a lot of this collection is me just going, oh, that's cheap, I'm going to buy it. And that's how I end up with a lot of a massive anime collections. I tend to buy stuff cheap when I can, and it rests on my shelf forever. But I hear so many good things about this, just never watched it. Next up is an absolute classic, Outlaw Star, the complete collection. Yeah, I love this. It is a fantastic series. Really, really nice collection. And you get a nice, look at that. I mean, you get a lovely art book with that. It's, I, I think I had the original, because Anime Limited originally had an Outlaw Star collection when they first started, then they re-released it is a like a, a more collector's edition um but yeah i really 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 like it one thing that's weird though is that like a lot of these is kind of like it comes out this side but outlaw star is kind of the other way around it's flipped so yeah that's kind of yeah it's a weird one but yeah i really love this series it's really 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 good next up is oh dear god <laughs> Psycho Pass Season 1 is an acceptable series. I I get the love of it. This is one of the worst things I've ever watched. And you know what? I really don't like um, the other character in Season 1, Kagami. But this is just so boring. I really did not enjoy it. And I think that seems to be general consensus. I mean, the only reason I picked it up was, again, it was cheap. And... A lot of people, some people I know who absolutely love the psychopaths, they were just like, you know what, it's really good, I like it just as much as season one. So I was just like, you know what, I'll check it out. And it, dear God, it was garbage. So yeah, some of the series on here that's on my collection, they are ones that I'm, I'm waiting for stuff to open back up so I can just take them away and sell. And Psychopaths season two is definitely one of them because yeah, it was not a fun time. Next up is Nap and Princess, which is upside down. Next up is Nap and Princess, which comes in a special. Yay! I like these boxes. So yeah, this is a this is again another anime which, much like um, the Calamity of a Zombie Girl, I would recommend as a kind of a popcorn kind of anime. It's one where it's not going to be it's not going to blow any minds, but it's a nice fun time when you watch it. Again, it's one where I could watch it a few times and not get really bored with it, but it's not like anything too fantastic. It's a nice shelf filler. It really is, and I really like I like the series with well, series, the movie enough to kind of pick it up as a as a um an a, a collector's edition rather than the normal one. I did buy the manga, which I've never actually read, so I need to I need to pick that one up sometime. Next up is the best anime of all time, Full Metal Alchemist, which I've never watched the original version of. Um, again, another cheap one that was an anime limited collect collections. I think it was like five quid or something stupidly cheap. But it never really had the interest to watch it. I like Brotherhood, but I'm not going to lie. Brotherhood is a series that I feel like... It gets a lot of praise for nostalgia. It's a great series, absolutely fantastic. It is no way, no way, one of my favourite series of all time. I would nowhere near recommend it to everybody. It's just a decent series that I think got a lot of people into anime, so I think it gets a lot of nostalgia. But yeah, um, it's fine. It's it's nothing bad. It's just I kind of watched it all and I was just like, yeah, I don't need to watch this ever again. I don't even know if I still own my copy of Brotherhood. There's a lot of Blu-rays that's packed away, which I will be showing at the end of this uh, video, that I've not seen the light of day for a while. So I don't know if Brotherhood's actually one of the ones in there. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who cares? Next up is another fantastic anime movie which I would recommend for everyone's collection and that is 
Red Line. My god, this is a fun movie. And is episode one Star Wars pod racing done right? Yeah. Um, imagine F Zero the movie, maybe. F Zero the movie, yeah, that's kind of what it is. But yeah, this is a fantastic movie that I had the pleasure of watching in the cinema not long ago, and yeah, that was it was such a good movie. Next up is Rage of Bahamut Genesis. Again, this is an one, Anime Limited, I think Universal put this out. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> um, this, I really, really like this series. However, I do not like the size of this box because, yeah, a lot of this is like, yeah, art book. And this is a massive, thick, huge art book that I'm never, ever going to look at. And, yeah, it's, I, I'm kind of tempted, that's not, I'd say... Some part of me is tempted to get rid of like the extra box and put the art book into storage or something, but it's like, yeah, it takes up so much space, but it is a fantastic series. I never actually went around and watched season two, though. I probably should, because I really, really enjoyed this. Underrated series, really underrated. Oh, yeah, Anime Limited, Universal Funimation. Yeah, you probably can't get it anymore. Amazon got the season two, so that's showing how much Funimation cared about it, but really underrated series. Really recommend it. Next up is Usagi Drop. I got this cheap. Um, I heard good things about it, and then I kind of bought it, and I haven't had a chance to watch it, but then I heard a lot of bad things and a lot of disturbing things about this one. Which kind of puts me off ever watching it. Maybe I'll someday check it out. But yeah, um, I heard a lot of really awkward things. Uh, maybe I've done it with the manga. But I really heard some uncomfortable things about this that put me off ever watching it after I bought it. Actually, I actually got this one mixed up with uh, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. So yeah, well done me. Next up is... Narcissa, the Valley of the Wind. It's look. It's in really crap condition. It's a steel book because at one point I cared about buying steel books. Now I don't. Now I certainly do not. It's a great movie. Um, most Ghibli movies are. Like I said before, the loop in the third one's my favourite one. But yeah, it's nothing bad. I don't know what this stuff is on it. But yeah, I'm not going to get into Ghibli stuff because it's Ghibli stuff, and everyone knows what a Ghibli movie is. Or is it Ghibli? I call it Ghibli. Ghibli, Ghibli. Next up is Lords, Marksman and Vanadis. Collector's Edition, I got it a long time ago. I heard it's a good etchy. I really didn't care for it. I really was not fussed about this series. It's one of those ones where it's kind of etchy for the sake of etchy, but can get away with not being etchy, to be fair. It's kind of weird, it's like, this bit was covered, so I was just like, oh, this looks like a boring series, then I was in the back, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is what the kind of series this is, and you know me, I like my etchy series, but, yeah, this series, I really was not fussed about, I remember watching it, and I was just kind of like, yeah, I've watched it, stick it on the shelf, never watch it again. Next up is Yorner of the Dawn, a decent series, I really enjoy this, this is what, it's weird, because... I have said in when I covered um, the manga of it, the first few episodes of this drag on so much. But then it gets really good towards the end. But then I never really had the feeling of, oh, I need to get part two. Because it doesn't finish off the series and they're never going to do a season two. And I really don't, I don't know what it is. The, the cover of this just feels like it's been out in the sun for too long. But all of the covers are like that. I really do not like the cover for this. It just looks really like sun bleach, but... Yeah, it's probably why it didn't do so well when they, when they released it. It kind of just like you look at it and just like, yeah, it looks pretty boring to be fair. But yeah, it's a good series. Um, never picked up season two because, well, it went out of print, didn't it? And Funimation stopped allowing Anime Limited to sell bloody Blu-rays. So yeah, not fun whatsoever. Next up is Castlevania, the complete season one, except... I forgot that season one was only four episodes long. So I own a Blu-ray of a episode of four episode anime. Runtime 96. It's the same it's the same as a movie. I mean I picked it up cheap in the anime limited deals. It was like stupid cheap, so I was just like, yeah, I'll buy it. Don't think I'll ever watch it to be fair, but it's nice to own in case Netflix ever decides Castlevania is boring and get rid of it. I'm not gonna lie, I really like season like this part of Castlevania, but I never really I, I didn't really enjoy season two. 
I've not even watched season three. Um, I don't know what it was. I think this felt more like Castlevania the games, whereas the rest of it just kind of just devolved into its own little world. And I was just like, mm, yeah, it was fine. I just never really enjoyed it that much. I've not watched it. Uh, again, I got given this. Um, I think it was a one of my friends got in a rare mystery box or something like that and they had already had it so I was, they give us it as a gift and I was just like oh brilliant thanks and I just never ever uh, went around and watched it I probably will again it's another one that's sitting on my shelf I often pick it up when I was just like oh I fancy watching something and I was just like yeah mm, yeah just never do so we had Psycho Pass Season 2 and now we've got Psycho Pass the movie yeah, Sim Season 2, this isn't very good. But we do have a fantastic series, which is Gatchaman Crowds Insight, or Crowds Gatchaman Insights, or Insight Crowds Gatchaman. This is a fantastic series. I wasn't huge on. I wasn't really aware of what Gatchaman was until I picked this up. I just heard a lot of really good positive stuff about this. And this was like 2 .99. I think Forbidden Planet had this on sale because they were like, oh, well, we can't sell it off. So I was just like, I'll pick it up. 2 .99, I'll pick it up. And I watched it and I absolutely loved it. Absolutely fantastic series, which I would really recommend people try and hunt down if they, if they ever see it, even if it's a decent price. I would really recommend it. Next up is Paprika, one of my favourite movies of all time. And I actually got this as, this is the original one that um, I picked up a few years ago. Because it went out of print for a while and I kind of really wanted to watch it. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to buy it. And I picked it up and I love it. The carnival music game, that is the parade music, that just sticks in my mind all the time. It's just one of those ones where you just constantly hear it. And in fact, I really want to rewatch this again. I need to... Really need to uh, rewatch it. In fact, I probably should stick this with the rest of the Satoshi Kon movies that I've got as well. Yeah. Also, this is kind of like you can tell it's an early Blu ray because it's got this weird border that they kind of had at one point. But yeah, um, I'm not going to complain. Experience high definition and paprika. Another one, again, this is another, I think this is one, another very early. Blu-rays because I don't remember seeing this very often and that is Rusion Z uh, It is not a spin-off of Dragon Ball Z um, This was created by the same studio as Akira and Yeah, um, this is about like an old man where he's kind of on life support So they build like a machine and the machine goes insane and takes them on a wild journey and Yeah, it's kind of it's a very interesting message uh, I don't really get too into this. It's been a long time. Actually. It's been a very long I've Probably not watched this in about 10 years, but yeah, um, I would really recommend people check this out if they can find it anywhere because it is a fantastic movie. Really recommend this one. Next up is one of my favorite KyoAni series of all time, and that is Sound Euphonium. I will someday reread the light novel for this because I do own it. And it was given a really beautiful collector's edition from Anime Limited. But yeah, there's a story behind this because Anime Limited picked up all of Sound Euphonium and then the whole um, Funimation thing dropped and they took everything, but they managed to save Sound Euphonium because I think Manga UK was just like, well, it's never going to sell. So we got Sound Euphonium season one. We've never gotten season two. I don't know if they have the license for it. Huge criminal shame that this is not easier to pick up. I'm sorry, but it's, it's one of those series that I feel like a lot of people should be watching. But I feel like it's died over in the West. A really huge shame that I didn't do as well as it should. Also, is Liz and the Bluebird. Another movie that I was really hoping that would get a release over here, but never did. So I eventually picked it up and yeah, fantastic movie. Honestly, I can't recommend this both of these enough. Um, this is kind of like a spin-off to Sound Euphonium, but you can watch it by itself. Really, really, really good anime. Next up is some trash. Uh, High School DxD B or N, I believe it's called. Again, um, I got this in an anime limited etchy seal. I think this is season two. Surprisingly, with my whole experience of etchy and stuff like that, 
I've never been hugely into high school DxD. Um, and the only reason is when things get hard, they'll come out on top. Wow, the standard against which all other fan service focus Harlem series should be judged. I should probably check this one out, you know. I really should. But I need to find season one. This is season two or three. I, the problem is, is that High School DxD is very vague on what it actually is for. Um, it doesn't say High School DxD season one, High School DxD season two. So I'm just like, which one do I start with? Is this like Fate Grand Order where I need to watch like 500 other Fates? God. Please hope not. But yeah, High School DxD, never watched it, but yeah, um, I probably need to. Speaking of etchy, we've got another one, The Testament of Sister New Devil. I remember, <laughs> this This is anime a little bit, again, I got in the same etchy set, and I was talking to the, um, Andrew Partridge, I was just like, oh, I like Prison Skill, and I like this and this, and I was like, what do you recommend? And he was just like, nah, it's crap. <laughs> I was like, nah, it's trash. But yeah, um, it, it's another one that I probably need to watch sometime, but I just never have. Um, I think this one, I heard this one's a little bit more uncomfortable, but... It's got an 18 written, it's obviously legal enough to be released in the UK, so obviously there can't be much wrong with it, it's probably just a, a really dodgy series. Next up is Royal Space Force, The Wings of Hononeske. I hope I pronounced that right. Again, another fantastic movie. I had this, I bought this really a long time ago, I never watched it. And someone I know at work who did their... Um, their university thesis on anime really recommended it. I was like, you know what? I actually own this. I've actually got this on a shelf in my um, in my uh, room. So I checked it out, and I really like it. There's a lot. There is some stuff that is really, um, really unforgivable in this movie, but it is still a fantastic movie, which I would recommend a lot of people try and check out. As you can imagine, with uh, com compared to my manga collection, which is kind of just trash, uh, I do seem to have some tears when it comes to anime, sometimes. Next up is Expelled from Paradise, and for those people who are looking at it, this is the same artist who did a lot of stuff for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So that means I absolutely had to pick this one up. I really enjoyed this movie. I really, really, really liked it. It was a really decent one. Um, it's got some dodgy CGI, but hey, what doesn't? I mean, the end of the day, Land of the Lustrous and Kimono Friends are in my collection. But yeah, I really did enjoy this one. It was a really good se uh, series movie that I do need to re-watch sometime. So next up is one of those series that I feel like everybody has in their collection or at least a lot of people have in their collection and that is Cowboy Bebop the complete season one and season two or well the complete full season anyway love this series absolutely love it fantastic series and the only thing is that it kind of put me off ever purchasing the um, Ultimate Edition that uh, Anime Limited uh, keep uh, advertising. I had this one and I was fine with it, but yeah, uh, that 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 ending though. I, I again, this is another one that I I had on my list as doing a complete history of, but then they kept doing more and more stuff with it, so I kind of was like, oh, I can't do anything with it. Um, but yeah, I you need to watch this one. I feel like it's one that everyone probably needs to watch at some point. But yeah, it's it's a fantastic series. Um, really recommend it if you are just getting into anime. Because, hey, it's one of the classics. And I don't like using that. It's one of the classics as an excuse to watch something. But yeah, this is one of the classics that I would really recommend people check out. Next up is Yurikuma Arashi. Yeah, and um, this one was weird. Not bad weird, but it was, yeah, uniquely weird. Grr, 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 that's all I remember. Grr, 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 grr. But yeah, yeah, these are like killer bears from outer space kind of weird thing. Um, it's a girly girl world, but yeah. Um, made by the same people who did uh, Sailor Moon and Revolutionary Girl Utena. Um, two series that I have never ever watched, but I really enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know what it was about it. I think I was just like, I just looked at it as a like, gay bears. Oh yeah, sure, I'll take gay bears. But yeah, um, 
Uh, I would recommend people check it out if they want something a little bit different because it was a really, really good series. Next up is Dime Dollar, Prince vs. Penguin Empire. Yeah, this is was ridiculous stupid. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, I only watched the first two or three episodes, but I remember really enjoying it. But I never went back to it. I think it was one of those ones where I kind of was just like, yeah, it's too goofy for me at some points, but I will go back to it. I will... I. I feel like I ought to myself to watch all of this because everyone I know says that I should watch all of it. And I need to listen to what everyone I know. Next up is Norin, the complete series. Um, not quite Silver Spoon. Yeah, um, this is a little bit... It, it was in the etchy thing, but it kind of had only a few etchy moments. But still, it was a decent enough series that I would... If you can get it in a bundle, maybe check it out. It's again, it's another little shelf filler that I kind of own. Next up is a Barakamon. I love this series so much. I actually enjoy the anime a lot more than the manga. The manga is still fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I would still 100% recommend the manga. And actually, I was thinking it was like volume one was like a one pound fifty or something at the uh, most recent see. So check that out if you have this if it's still up anyway. But yeah, it's a fantastic series, calligraphy, fun young child character that we see in like Yotsuba and Spy Family. And if you like them kind of ones, uh, yeah, check out this one. A really fantastic series that I don't hear enough of. I don't hear enough love for this series. So yeah, really recommend checking that one out at some point. Next up is Show by Rock, um, another series that... Yeah, absolutely fine with this one. It was a fun, goofy little series and kind of a shelf filler, I would probably say. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a fun series and yeah, it's just... The cuter they are, the harder they rock. That's, that, that, that's what we need to see about it. The cuter they are, the harder they rock. Next up is a movie that I think everybody seems to own. And that is Akira. I've not watched Akira in a long time. I think this is one of the very first Blu-rays I got. And actually, I forgot I even own this one, to be honest. I keep sitting there going, do I even own Akira? And then I tend to buy Akira again. Then I find it, it's like, oh, I do own Akira. And then I have to sell up a, sell a separate copy of Akira. Um, it's one of those ones I feel like everybody seems to own. But it, it, for a reason, obviously, it, it is like that classic anime. That classic anime that, like, really everybody knows about uh, Ghost in the Shell the other one and uh, maybe Ninja Scroll but yeah um, Akira legendary movie legendary next up is another movie that I love I picked up the um, Blu-ray of it quite recently because I owned it on uh, DVD I actually owned this about three or four times again it's one of those ones I think I bought then realized I already had it and then I was just like oh I'll buy it again on Blu-ray but Tokyo Godfathers, again, classic movie. I, I try to watch it like every Christmas because it is like the anime Christmas movie. Uh, really, really recommend checking it out if you've never seen it before, especially at Christmas. Uh, yeah, really good, really, really good movie. And another movie that I think everyone's seen, or at least mo most people seen, is uh, Makoto Shinkai's uh, Yonium. And yeah, oh, there we go. Fireworks advertised in Yonium. And this is the anime limited. I think I don't know if they, they, this is just like the limited, and then they did a collector's, and then they did a normal edition. But it's got the soundtrack, iron, and you know what? It's got a good soundtrack, uh, at least in my opinion. But yeah, um, really enjoyed this movie. I, I can watch it a few times. I it's one of those movies. Actually, I I watched it at the cinema, loved it, watched it again, and was just kind of like, oh, this is this, this is kind of okay. And then I watched it a third time. I was like, "Oh, this like it's one of those ones." I was kind of thinking, "Oh, it gets worse on every watch." And then I did left it for a few years, and then watched it again a few weeks ago. And I was just like, "Yeah, this is actually still a really good movie." Um, yeah, really recommend it. Um, it's pretty much the staple of anyone's anime collection. It seems at the moment. Uh, yeah, great movie. Another great movie is Perfect Blue. Um, this is the old steel book. I think one of the very first anime limited ones. Yeah, you can see, look, number one. They didn't keep up with that numbers, so we've got number one. Is this Perfect Blue Volume 1? Season 1? Oh, but yeah, I, I, I thought it had a, um, excuse me, who are you? Um, 
I'm that man and this is an anime related thing but yeah fantastic movie really really love it um, it's one of those ones you can't really tell what this movie is about by just looking at the cover it could, this could be anything this could be like a, a guy standing at the top of the year uh, on top of a building while a giant woman smiles at her who knows again I spoke about this one before and this is Ninja Scroll yeah, the movie that, like, yeah, um, the, the very first time I saw an animated, uh, an anime hentai sex scene as well. Yeah, if, if, if nothing else, that's what I remember. <laughs> that's what actually I remember from this movie. Um, one of my first anime that I watched, um, I really need to go back and rewatch. I, I bought this years ago and I was just like, oh, this will be fun. I need to rewatch it. And then I never rewatched it. But yeah, it's one of those ones that it's, it's a good movie. I'd, I'd still say it's a pretty decent movie. Um, the woman kills the guy by um, poison, poison him via sex. Yeah, spoil the whole movie for you. you know, don't need to watch it. After that, we've got Kill Me Baby, which is yeah, I have got anime limit, no MVM mystery box. Enough said, really. There's not really much I can talk about about Kill Me Baby after we're talking about uh, ninja sex, really, can we? Next up, it's time to go to. Idol Hell, and I have Love Live, School Idol Movie, Limited Edition, and yeah, this is kind of awkward because I already owned Love Live Season 1 on DVD, Love Live Season 2 on Blu-ray, and Love Live, the complete movie on um, um, Australian Blu-ray, so yeah, this this, come, this is like a kind of an awkward box, but it's, it's nice, you know, it's like... Nine Sunny Deer Song Art Cards. I've not even watched the movie. Um, I probably should actually sit down and watch the Love Live movie. It's I like Love Live. It's one of those series that I kind of, for a long time, I was just like, I'm never going to enjoy watching Love Live. And then I watched Love Live, and I really enjoyed Love Live. So, yeah. Um, someday I'll go back and re-watch all of the original series, because it's all about uh, sunshine these days. Uh, so yeah, um, Love Life. I like Love Life. Is that an admission? Yeah, I like Love Life. And just when you were safe to go back from Idle Hell, it's once again time to go back to Idle Hell. Um, I literally have just finished watching Love Life Season 1 again because Season 2 dropped not long ago. Um, dropped through the letterbox, so I was like, yeah, love it really much. Um, love Life Season 1 was a lot of fun. Really looking forward to uh, checking out Season 2. Because, yeah, it's it's a goofy, fun series that people just like. And before you ask... Actually, I'll tell you who is the best girl. Um, this one. The one with the split personality. She is the best girl from Love Live. Fight me on Smash Brothers. Next up is... Toradora. Toradora. She's the one that kind I will never ever watch because I'm still waiting on the last light novel. Um, I got this as a birthday gift. I actually owned the DVD and then they released the blue ear, so I was just like, yeah, I'll get that. And I got it for free because it's a birthday gift. So, yep, looking forward to eventually watching this. Reading the light novel, one of my favourite light novels of all time. Can't wait for it. Next up is Pokemon The Power of Us. You teach me and I'll sniff glue, power of us, that's not the words. I really liked the new Pokemon batch of movies and I'm not going to lie, this is probably my favourite Pokemon movie. I really like the way it kind of tackled a lot of things differently. And yeah, I'm not going to lie, I do have the nostalgia for the original three movies. But this one, I really, I just love this one so much. I just love, like, the, I love the cast of characters, how, like, we've got, obviously, we've got Ash. We've got a young little girl. We've got a gal girl. Yeah, we've actually got a gal girl. And um, we've got a scientist, young man scientist, who, like, has trouble talking. We've got, like, an older guy. Um, who's basically Usopp and we've got an old lady all as like the main cast so I really like the idea of Pokemon being more than just a uh, thing for children because that's one of the things I kind of like don't like is like, it's always like, the main protagonist is always kids but this one's it's a nice it's a nice um, change of it also this girl is the best Pokemon girl who is really underrated fight me there's gonna be a lot of fights isn't there mm, crap 
next up is this is not an anime this is definitely not an anime this is uh, when the wind no this is when the wind blows uh, this is a fantastic series about nuclear fallout um, an older generation they believe in what the government told them about preparing for nuclear war and the government feels them yeah really hits home um, considering everything that's going on yeah um i would it it's not an anime check it out anyway though it's a really good movie next up is beck mongolian chop squad i thought this was about butchers but it's not it's about guitar players and a band fantastic series really really good series that i am um, i need to rewatch it i really do need to rewatch this because it's a uh, it's one that I really enjoyed, but I just never really got the chance to re I don't even think, remember if I even finished it off, you know. Um, I will someday read the manga as well. I think I picked it up in that box set not long ago. That humble bundle. So, yeah. Next up is Peacemaker Kurugani, or Peacemaker, I think it's just called in here. I really didn't enjoy this one. I was really bored with it, to be fair. Um, it's a ninja series, a samurai series, and it's just kind of, yeah. You get them a dime a dozen at one point, we were, but this one just did nothing for me. I was really bored. Next up is Chrono Crusade. I thought this was a sequel to Chrono Trigger, you know. I was wrong. <laughs> it's the it just because it's got the same kind of style. It's like the, the Chrono Trigger kind of Chrono Crusade and Chrono... What's the other one called? Chrono Cross, I think the American Nair game was. But yeah, um, I thought it was kind of related to that, but no. But if you like nuns with guns, yeah, definitely check this one out. Um, it's, really, it's a really good series. I would really recommend it. Uh, um, I think it only comes in DVD. So Some of these anime limited ones, they kind of just release them in DVD at one point, And it's kind of like, yeah, um, weird. But yeah, I'm not going to complain. Next up is Kion the movie. Um, I'm going to talk to this separately to Kion because there's a little bit more to talk about. And this is where they go to the UK. That's right, they go to the UK, and it is as insane as you think. Yeah, I love this movie so much. Um, we need more anime that goes to the UK because they always either either have it was really nice place or really off the mark. Um, but no, nobody gets uh, punched in by a. No horses get punched in this, so it's not really the UK. Next up we have. Oh, next up we have Keon Seasons 1 and Seasons 2. I really like this series. Um, I picked this up because Season 2 was going out of print, and it was one of those ones where people keep recommending this. So I think I got this like for $9.99. I think I paid a little bit more for this one. But yeah, um, really good series really enjoyed it not for everybody it's one of the early cute girls doing cute things but i i like it i like it it's a really good series another series that i don't hear anybody talking about but i love is narima daikon brothers um blues brothers the anime i would basically say uh, really fun series uh, made by the same people who did excel saga something that i really hope gets a, a re-release because i really want to watch excel saga at some point uh but it's quite hard to find at these at this at the present moment at least it's hard to find with a copy that actually works um i did pick up volume one a few years ago from cex and it didn't work and i was really upset and annoyed but yeah um Really de recommend checking this one out, at least checking out the opening and the ending. This is why we don't get uh, dub openings anymore, because it peaked with Nara and my Dagon brothers. Um, it, 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 nothing's, nothing's surpassed that in a dub opening or a dub ending. They sing about going home and having a drink. Next up is Kino's Journey. Fantastic series, one of my favourite series of all time. Um, beautiful series. I really, really, really want the light novel. I keep shouting, Vertical, give us the light novel, but they never listen to me. And I'm not shouting at them, I'm just angrily tweeting at them. Maybe I'll just do what uh, uh, other people do with um, Tokyo Revengers and just be like, Come on, Kino's Journey light novel! Let's all form an alliance and get it out to us. Next up is quite possibly one of the worst series I've ever watched. It's... <sighs> Someone told me this was hilarious. I watched it. I was it was absolutely abysmal. 
It's people in the Vatican, priests in the Vatican, basically doing a Da Vinci Code. I don't care. I don't even want to talk about it. It was terrible. Next up is one of my favourite series. Again, Spice and Wolf. Um, anime classics. It is a classic. It is certainly a classic. Imported from America because, you know, we're in the UK. We don't deserve Spice and Wolf on Blu-ray. Um, I haven't watched it in a long time, but I actually got signed by uh, J. Michael Tatum. So yeah, um, he was really happy about it as well because everyone was taking um, Attack on Titan and um, Eda stuff to to from to sign. So he was just like, oh, it was it's like it was a nice to actually see him really happy. He was like, it's nice to see people in the UK still care about Spice and Wolf. And I was like, yeah, we do. We had to import this, <laughs> but yeah, love this series, love it so much. Next up is the Saga of Tanya the Evil, a more recent one. I was really happy when we finally got this as a release because, yeah, um, it's a fantastic series and everyone should uh, check it out at some point. Um, young, well, young man Isekai into another world is reborn as a young girl on the wrong side of a war. Enough said. Next up is Overlord, the complete season one, the complete season two, and the complete season three. There was a lot of drama about this one because what happened was Anime Limited released Overlord, the complete series, years ago before season two and three even came out. They then lost the Funimation license and then Manga UK released season 2 as a collector's edition only and they were like, no, it's not going to get a re-release, it sold terribly and then they finally re-released it with season 3. So yeah, I love Overlord, it's one of my favourite isekai, one of my favourite light novels of all time. Really recommend checking it out if you want a dark uh, isekai. Well, see with Tanya as well, that's dark as well. Speaking of light novels, here's a title that, again, like Kino's Journey, hasn't been released over here. but. I love it, and that is Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes don't exist. This series basically predicts the future. So this is a story about where everything is censored, kids are being brought up uh, that they don't have any concept of sex, they don't have any concept of um, eroticism, and they grow up absolutely screwed up. Um, so there's like a whole underground uh, terrorism where they kind of just like throwing up uh, naked pictures off the top of the building and yeah um, it's a fantastic series if you kind of have this whole thing about censorship and like censorship and stuff like that check this one out because this is predicting a lot of stuff that's going on in the real world when it comes to anime and manga and yeah again signed by the um, the main protagonist fun times. I think he also did Yuri on Ice. I can't remember. Josh Grell, I think it was. Um, was it Josh Grell? I, I don't remember a lot of Funimation names, sorry. Next up is that series that everybody knows, Berserk. That's right, I am actually aware of Berserk. A lot of people ask me, when are you going to read Berserk? Well, I've got the f season one and I like season one. I'd never really got any inclination to actually read Berserk because I don't know, it ruined season one for me, maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll get to it eventually someday. But yeah, no no rush. But yeah, I do. I have seen a lot of Berserk. And yeah, it is a series that I have certainly watched. Next up is Jinro, the Brigade. I can't remember what it's called. Is it just called Jinro? I thought it was called something else. Um, again, I watched this movie and I really liked it. But I don't remember much of it. It was one of those classic movies that I always wanted to watch when I was growing up and when I was really getting like early into my anime collection and stuff like that. But I never ever actually got the chance to watch it. So I eventually picked it up, uh, I think it was early in the year, and I think I watched it, but I think a lot of stuff was going on, so I don't remember watching much of it. Um, so I'm going to re-watch it again sometime very soon, because, yeah, I want to cover this a little bit more. Next up is a title that I don't hear many people talking about, if at all, and that is Tokyo Marble Chocolate. If you like Tokyo Godfathers and you want another really nice Christmassy year uh, movie, I would really recommend Tokyo Marble Chocolate. It's a little bit more artsy, but yeah, um, really, really cute romantic story. I really, really liked it. 
Next up is Gangsta. I really like Gangsta. It's one of those series I really enjoy, but I don't. What I don't hear anybody talking about it, even in the manga community. I don't hear anybody talking about Gangsta. Um, but even obviously in the anime, this was like the very last series that uh, the um, I can remember what was the studio. Um, Manglobe, that was. It was like their last series, and people were like, oh, it killed Manglobe, even though they were kind of like in financial difficulty for a long time. But yeah, um, really, really good series. Really fantastic. Really recommend this one if you can never find it. Don't see it very often these days. But yeah, just, just look at that cover. That look, just looks awesome. Next up is another one I got real cheap, and that is The Eccentric Family. Um, the only reason I picked it up was because it was a collector's edition and it was like six ninety nine or something really cheap. But yeah, I've not even watched it yet, but I'm looking forward to uh, checking it out sometime. Next up is The Sword of the Stranger. I watched this one again quite recently and my god you can just watch the last 20 minutes or the last the last battle and it is so worth the price of admission alone absolutely amazing movie with a really really good story really really nice um for the last battle alone really absolutely fantastic next up well, we're going to look at something a little bit more artsy because, yeah, I have some more artsy stuff. And that is Genius Party and Genius Party Beyond. So, this is kind of like an a anthology of a lot of artists, a lot of um, directors and stuff like that. And, yeah, um, very interesting. There's a lot of really good content in here. I, I can't really comment much on it because it's like... It's one of those ones where there's so many little stories and it's just kind of like, it's hard to kind of just narrow it down to one thing. But yeah, if you really like animation as a whole, really recommend checking this one out because there's a lot of really good content. Another one, and that is Momotaro Sacred Sailors. Yeah, you know, the propaganda anime. Um, and it's like, it is the first feature length animated film in Japan. That's right, the first feature-led animated film. I mean, it's a, it's a load of rubbish. It's a, You can tell it's a propaganda movie, but yeah, I felt like this was like an important thing I needed to have in my collection. Um, as someone who absolutely loves animation on a whole, I feel like it's one of those ones where you kind of like have to kind of get into it. And I did want to do a video on it, um, but it comes with this absolutely beautiful book from Jonathan Clements um, who really covers the movie and the making of in a huge amount of depth. If you like this kind of thing, like I mean like if you like animation on the whole and you're kind of interested, I would really recommend checking this one out. And then we go on to the Anthem of Heart which is not about uh, Nazi propaganda <laughs> and is uh, yeah, um, this is a very pure movie, a very emotional movie. I really, really liked it. Um, heartbreaking. I remember this being absolutely heartbreaking. Um, even just thinking about it, I was just like, oh my god, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because like, it's a... It is a very emotional movie, and I really recommend people check it out. It's going to be on screen anime very soon, so it, when it comes out, I really recommend people check it out. Next up is Belladonna of Sadness. Again, another artsy movie, another one that kind of shows animation as a whole. Um, disturbing, very disturbing movie that, yeah... Um, it's not going to be. It's not a movie that you're going to watch to enjoy. You watch it to uh, enjoy the artwork. It's like, it's all done like on a, like a, a tapestry. It's very unique in the way it's done. But yeah, I very interesting movie indeed. And yeah, I, as you can see, I, I some of my stuff I have isn't necessarily uh, something that I would enjoy watching. It's something that, but I feel it's something that as a lover of animation, I kind of need to watch. That doesn't make me pretentious, does it? Maybe it does. I don't care. Next up is Mobile Suit Gundam, the movie trilogy. I remember this coming out and I, I loved the original Mobile Suit Gundam. 
and I wanted to rewatch it. And then they released it as a trilogy, and I was just like, yep, yep, I just love this classic like art style for these uh, movies. It just looks so nice. I don't know if it ever re got released in the US. I remember this being like a huge massive thing when Anime Limited picked it up because um, a lot of people wanted it in the uh, the US, but they couldn't get it. But yeah, uh, it's 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 a nice start to Gundam. It's good way to watch Gundam, I suppose. You can also just watch, you know, Mobile Suit Gundam, the Gundam TV series. Um, again. It's Gundam. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of Gundam here because, yeah, this is my Gundam collection. But, yeah, Anime Limited really do some fantastic, fantastic releases when it comes to Gundam. I really, really love the way that they, they kind of look. And, like I said, this was my first foray into Gundam. I remember being absolutely ill one time and just lying in bed, just binging all of Mobile Suit Gundam. And then you got obviously get Collectors of Hopuk as well. But yeah, it's um, it's Gundam. It's the very first Gundam, and I feel like it's hard to kind of recommend a starting point for Gundam. But I always tell to say, watch one that you like, maybe Iron Blood Orphans, then watch Mobile Suit Gundam. After that came Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, which again, uh, these are quite stiff because the art books kind of jam things in, so they're not kind of moving around. Uh, get out, art book, get out. But again, another fantastic release from Anime Limited. Um, I think this is probably my favourite of the Gundams. Um, at least the favourite main series um, that I've watched. Because, I don't know, I just, there's something about it I just really, really, really like. But yeah, it, it, it was a fantastic series. After that came Mobile Suit Gundam Double Z, Which... For you people who like One Piece, there is a lot of interesting um, things for the character of Frankie in this one. So this character here is actually voiced by the same person who voices Frankie. But a lot of Frankie's little origin things, like Frankie was a junker, Frankie was like in a shipbuilder and stuff like that. It kind of relates back to um, this character. Also, with the Fra the, the Frank either with the Gundam, um, it has like the docking systems and stuff like that. So it's like yeah, there's a lot of stuff that if you like One Piece, um, you might get a few nice little nods from this. And this is again, it's another fantastic. I really enjoyed this one. Not as much as the Gundam. I think it was um, a little bit more of a difficult watch, but I still really enjoyed it. Then we go on to Mobile Suit Gundam Shah's Counter-Attack. And again, a nice standalone movie. Um, hard to... Uh, I think it was hard to watch, but I, again, I, I enjoyed it. It was a nice... I, I, it was one of those ones I remember putting the English dub on, and then I remember switching the English dub off straight away because it was not a great dub. But yeah, um, fantastic, fantastic movie. Next up is Gundam 0083. Not watched it, another anime limited one. Um, you're probably going to see this quite a bit because I'm... Well, I see it quite a bit. I'm a little bit behind on the anime limited actually watching them. I pick up every Gundam that they release, but I'm, I'm behind on actually watching them. Um, next up we have Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin 1-4. to Again, another fantastic release. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's hard to get... This is actually different to Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin manga, which is a little bit confusing. I thought this, like, the manga was going to be like the adaptation of this, but it, it actually wasn't. So, And then I've also got Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin 5 and 6, which I've yet to even open to watch. Uh, I'm probably going to re-watch 1 to 4 first and then go on to 6. Next up in the Gundam set is Monster Musume. This is not a Gundam. But it sits on with my Gundam. Oh god, I'm probably going to get demonetized now. Um, yeah, um, I love this series. You know, you guys know I love this series. Fantastic, fun, stupid, etchy series. That sits proudly in my Gundam collection. Things that men want to be inside of. That's what it is. That's a collection of. Next up is Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt, December Sky, and Mobile Suit Gundam Bandit's Flower. I recently rewatched this, and 
my god, if you ever want to get into a Gundam, try watching Thunderbolt because wow, that is such a fantastic movie. I, uh, I was really gutted that I missed a few years ago that um, they had, I think they had both of these on in Scotland Loves Anime uh, on the cinema. And I'm really gutted that I missed them because the surround system, wow, that would have been amazing. Next up is Mobile Suit Gundam G No Reconquista in G. Jesus Christ, this is a weird one. Yeah, very weird. Well, this is one of the very early anime limited ones, but yeah, I think this. I think at the time this was the most recent one that was out. Um, but yeah, oh God, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll not talk about that one because nobody talks about Gino Reconquista in G. Next up is Mobile Suit Gundam Double Zero. And this is parts one and parts two. And I'm not going to lie, I watched this and I felt it was incredibly forgettable. I don't know why. I've actually just bought the um, the newest release. Um, they've just, Anime Limited have just put up um, the OVAs and the movies and it comes in a big box to hold all of this in. Well, yeah, um, I enjoyed it, but it, it felt very forgettable compared to the others, and I just kind of ended up binging it all in one uh, one or two weeks. But it's it's Gundam, it's serviceable, it's a decent enough Gundam. I just I just didn't love it. I just don't know why. Next up is the Gundam that I feel like pretty much everybody knows except maybe the original, and that is Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. This is an anime limited collector's edition that um, released in two parts. They originally released Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, which came in two separate sets. And then they released Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, which I have never watched. Um, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing is so cheesy. It is incredibly cheesy and yeah, <laughs> it's a fun mo It's a fun series. It's just, yeah. Um, it's weird. It's kind of one of those ones where it's like nostalgia certainly plays a part in it. It's not my favourite Gundam, but yeah, it's certainly a Gundam series that I've watched. So yeah, Gundam Double Zero is going to come, going to get another one of these kind of um, big boxes, so you can kind of put all all in as well. So that's really nice of them. Next up, we have that Mother Truckin' Pirate Animu, and that is One Piece Collection One, One Piece. Collection 2, One Piece, Collection 3, One Piece, Collection 4, One Piece, Collection 5, signed by Sunny Street, I forgot about that. One Piece, Collection 6, signed by Eric Veal, I believe it was. Oh my god, I've secretly revealed my name. Oh well, there's about an hour and a half at least of their content in here before it. Nobody will ever know. One Piece Collection 7, in other words, the one with the best cover on. One Piece Collection 8, One Piece Collection 9, I can't show that. One Piece Collection 10, One Piece Collection 11, One Piece Collection 12, One Piece Collection 13, One Piece Collection 14, one Piece Collection 15 One Piece Collection 16 One Piece Collection 17 One Piece Collection 18 One Piece Collection 19 One Piece Collection 20 featuring Donut Boy One Piece Collection 21 That's right, in the UK we still don't have Collection 22 or 23 and that is so far 516 episodes of One Piece and there's about 930 I think at the moment that's right there's a lot of One Piece also I have One Piece oh, I'll put them in the right order One Piece movie collection 1 to 3 one Piece Movie Collection 4 to 6 and One Piece Movie Collection 7 to 9 signed by... I can't remember what it's called. But your voice is Vivi. Sheremiah Lee, I believe? 
But yeah, these are the One Piece movie collections. I don't believe they ever got these in America, including the best, the best of all of the One Piece movies. I, yeah, well, at least one of the best. I, I love this one so much. Really recommend uh, checking, trying to find these if you can, because there's a lot of great content on them. Also, speaking of movies, I have One Piece Strong World, One Piece Heart of Gold, One Piece Film Gold, and most recently, One Piece Stampede. Can you tell I really like One Piece? One Piece Stampede, I'd probably say is my favourite then. I like Film Z as, as well. Um, I do have that in Japanese um, somewhere. Where I'm at, now I'm kind of at the point... I've shown you everything that I've got on shelves. So the next part of this is the stuff I don't have on my shelf. And I'm just going to rattle through a lot of them because, hey, I'm not going to lie. I've not watched a lot of them. Uh, if I have, it's been a long time ago. So let's start. First up is Nadia, The Secret of the Blue Water. I know it's from the creator of Neon Evangelion. I don't know. I know it's from the creators of Neon Genesis Evangelion. That's as much as I can see. Never watched it. Bayonetta, it tells a story. It tells a story of the original game. It's good if you don't have the ability to play the original game, I suppose. Haganai. I don't have many friends. I probably should have liked this one a lot more. And I think if I went and rewatched it, I would enjoy it a lot more. Um, I just, I don't know, it was something, I watched season one and really liked it, so I bought season two and didn't really like it. Uh, I don't know what it was, I really need to watch the, re watch the, read the manga, I've got uh, volume one for quite some time. But uh, yeah, um, I need to check this out because it's, uh, it's one that's been lingering on the back of my mind for quite some time. Next up we have Fuse Memoirs of the Hunter Girl. I've watched it, I don't remember even watching it. Space Adventure Cobra. Love this movie. This was such a cheesy, cheesy movie that I paid like one ninety nine dollars for. Um, I, when I was just buying random anime, like a lot of this, a lot of this stuff we will see on the next like half hour or so will just be stuff I just bought randomly by the way. And these are just like, this was like one ninety nine. I was just like, I'll put it on and I was like, yep, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's really cheesy. It's really Cringy you were looking back, but it's a, it's a good laugh. Next up is Ghost in the Shell Innocence. I'm not going to lie. I don't even remember this movie. I really do not. Sony Annie. Super Sonic Call, the animation. I have a guilty pleasure, and that is this series it's like it's kind of like really bad but it's kind of like it, do, it does have some really nice but he was like cool um but yeah that, that yeah it's been put away for a reason i bought this for like a pound it looked like an anime i don't know if it is but you know i own it poundland is a secret source of anime you can sometimes get some really good deals but most of the time you pretty much can't i remember this one was one i was just like yeah i'm gonna try this one See what it's like. I've never watched it. Um, I spoke about this earlier on, and this is Heaven's Lost Property and Heaven's Lost Property uh, 40. Uh, is it called? That's what it's called? Heaven's Lost Property. Yeah, Heaven's Lost Property 40. I spoke about it earlier. I'm not really going to talk about it again, to be honest. And next up is Kenichi, The Mightiest Disciple, Seasons 1 and Seasons 2. Um, my brother actually imported the American version of this. And this is actually the English version, but I like the slipcovers. So I was just like, yep, I'm taking the slipcovers off the American one. And said he, I think he just donated them to a charity or something like that. Because he, we couldn't watch American DVDs, we can only watch American Blu-rays. Um, I've got some Full Metal Panics, which isn't going to be in this because they're in the bag to be donated. But yeah yeah next up is professor layton and the eternal diva um i loved the professor layton games i really enjoyed them and i really enjoyed this movie um this was actually one of the first anime i think it was the first anime of blu-ray i ever bought um i always say my first anime that i bought was full metal panic and that was on dvd which i'm not going to be covering this because i don't have the discs anymore but yeah, Professor Layton and the Eternal Diva, 
was certainly one that uh, I remember picking up way back when. Next up is HAL. Um, I've watched this a few times and it's from the studio that brought us Attack on Titan. And yeah, um, it's an interesting, very interesting movie. Um, I'm just trying to figure. Is it, I'm trying to figure out how long it was. It's about 70 minutes long. But once you find out the twist, and you know there's a twist in it, it becomes unwatchable for later subsequent watches, which is a huge shame because it is a decent enough movie. Next up, I have XXX Holic Season One Part Two. I think I had Season One at one point, Part One, but I don't now. Don't remember watching. I remember actually watching the first half and I think it was pretty good, but yeah, um pretty much yeah, I don't I don't I don't have season one, I don't think anymore, unless it's in this stack of uh, stuff. Claymore, again I had the DVD originally, I got the uh, Blu-ray, this went into storage. Starship Operators Never watched it, but I think I'm going to really enjoy it. Uh, I'm, I am going to sort some of these out and maybe put them onto my normal shelf if I want to re-watch them, because there is a few here that I kind of forgot about that I've got on my list to re-watch, and this is one of them. Um, I think the other one was Blue Submarine 009, which I don't know if it's in this stack. Yeah? There's, a, there's a few stacks of, <laughs> of stuff I've got. Also, Panty and Stocking, a series that, well, that, that was really massive years ago, but it kind of dropped off quite a bit. Um, yeah, um, another one I really need to rewatch. I'll maybe pick up the Blu-ray, if there's a Blu-ray out for it. Metropolis, um, fantastic movie, really enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. It was a really good uh, movie, well worth checking out. The Castle of Cagliostro, this is the uh, DVD version, um, I can't really comment, it's, we've already spoken about this one quite at length, so I'm not going to discuss it even further. Next up is One Piece Log Collection Nico Robin, this was long before we got the UK releases, this is the, um, this is some of Water 7, any Lobby, this is like basically Robin's backstory, but it's got a really, really nice collectible cover. Um, I think it come with like a chopper and a robin keyring as well, which was really cute. Um, but yeah, um, before we could get them, I picked this one up and yeah, since I now own them in English, with the English sub and dub on, I don't really need this anymore, but I will keep it because it's my first One Piece uh, DVD. Space Dandy, we talked about this one before, this is just the collector's edition of Season 1. This needs to go in the bundle to get sold because I don't really have the space for it and, well, yeah. Another Ghost in the Shell, another one I don't even remember. Again, nothing wrong with it. I think I remember enjoying it for what it was, but a lot of these Ghost in the Shell movies were kind of like, eh. They weren't really great, but they weren't really too amazing or anything like that. So, yeah, kind of forgot about it. Gak, oh, Gak, Gan could show Le Comte de Monte Cristo. This is the Count of Monte Cristo. Very stylish anime. Um, really, really, I'm just trying to see if, yeah, it's really, really stylish. It's got a little art book which is getting a bit full. Oh, I've got I've actually got a double of that, so I do need to uh, sort that out. But yeah, this one was one of those ones that was on Anime Limited that I had for ages and it kind of went dirt cheap and yeah, kind of, everyone kind of didn't buy it. Ha! Huh, I senses it this time. So yeah, A Thousand and One Nights and Cleopatra um, from Osamu Tezuka, much like I um, oh, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. The other one that we spoke, we spoke about a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, earlier on in the video. You can tell I've been recording this for about three or four hours now. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like early adult animation. Yeah, I picked it up because hey, it's it's historic, isn't it? Next up is Love Hina, the complete series plus Christmas and Spring specials. And yeah, this is all of the Love Hina um, discs all in one kind of thing. I really wish Love Hina got a Blu-ray treatment. I would really happily buy it. Also included is Love Hina again, um, which is kind of the last few volumes of the manga adapted into the anime. Again, this is another one. I think I need to kind of put this on display because I love, I love Lofina. It's guilty, guilty, guilty pleasure. 
but I'm not guilty about it. Next up is The Garden of Words, just directed by Makoto Sh I've not watched this one. Right, that's going on the shelf to be watched then. <laughs> and Recon, um, this was another weird one, MVM box set. It was where they can see dead people and uh, there's a, this ghost is possessing people and stuff like that and yeah it was a, it was dumb fun I don't really remember much it was kind of a forgettable little title you're probably gonna find a lot of these titles that I'm going to cover here either stuff I've watched ages ago or I've kind of forgot what they're like next up is 009 re cyborg I've won this one about three or four times it's a really really good movie um, really recommend picking up at one point and was my introduction to the 009 cyborg franchise um, a franchise that I've read one volume of and never read anything again but I did enjoy it and um, this is a very enjoyable movie um, a production IG does but I reminded more of Tiger and Bunny from Sunrise so yeah um, yeah more of Makoto Shinkai, and this is the place promised in our early days, um, which also includes Voices of a Distant Star. So, yeah, um, two fantastic movies, well worth re uh, reading them, watching them at some point. I think I, was, I had to check the side of it, and it's on the front, but yeah, it's a Makoto Shinkai movie. You kind of know what you're going to be getting from it, and yeah, you're getting two very good movies. Kami Sama Kiss Season 2, another MVM one. I really liked Season 1, which I didn't see in the stack of um, anime that I've uh, pulled out. So I'm sure I've got another stack of anime somewhere because I'm looking at it like, I've got Barefoot Gain somewhere and I've just never seen it and I never pulled it out. So maybe it might be later on. It might not be. We don't know. Love, Election and Chocolate. Never watched it. Next up is, this is interesting because this is Back in Monogatari Part 1, Back in Monogatari Part 2, and Nisi Monogatari. So, interestingly enough, I picked these up because I wanted to get into the Monogatari series. I watched one episode of Monog Back in Monogatari and was just like, I don't understand what's going on, and then stuck them on a shelf. With the idea that I was I was going to read it and then get back to it. I've only just started reading uh, Monogatari and I've only just finished Nisi Monogatari. Um, I can watch the toothbrush scene. Victory for all of us. But yeah, I've never actually watched them. But I own these. And somebody I might ever pick up the rest of Monogatari. But probably not. Next up is some Ghibli stuff. I've got Parkour Roscoe. Uh, Ponyo. My Neighbor Totoro. My Neighbour the Yamadas, Arietti, Spirited Away, and The Wind Rises. I'm not going to get too bogged down in uh, Studio Ghibli stuff because like I said, I think everybody knows these movies, everybody has seen them at some point, um, and there's not really much to talk about them. I did buy a lot of them because we were going to the Studio Ghibli Museum and when we went to Japan, I was just like, oh, I better start watching Ghibli movies, and uh, yeah, got about four or five into it before I was like, I kind of want to watch something else. Ghibli movies are good as a kind of isolated thing, but once you start binge watching them, yeah, not fantastic, at least not for me. Next up we have Dominion Tank Police Acts 1 and 2 and Dominion Tank Police Acts 3 and 4. Um, they had all of this in CEX so I don't even think it's going to work. Um, you can tell it's old, you can tell it's an old DVD release by Animazen. Animazen. Don't know what that is, never seen them. Um, but I've never watched this, but I know it's a series that I feel like I would love if I watched. Um, again, I'm going to stick it in the shelf of kind of like, I need to watch this. I probably should. Um, but yeah, I've just never watched them so far. Also, Dead Leaves from the producer of Goose Ghost in the Shell. Um, another one that I remember being really stylish and looking really cool years ago, but I don't think I've ever watched it. So again, and another one that I'm going to have to stick into the shelf of need to watch it. Along with this one, Blue Submarine 707 Missions 1 and Missions 2, which um, 100 minutes, it's like, it's like basically it's like two over years, but again it's another one that a lot of people recommended and I saw it like for like a pound or something, so I was like, yeah, Poundland! Next up is Free Eternal Summer. As you can imagine, I don't really 
care about three. I like actually. I'm not gonna lie. I really liked three season one. Three season two really felt like they were just like ran out of ideas and then they kind of just kept going. But yeah, um, wasn't a huge fan of season two and it was in an anime limited box. So hey. Next up is Shiki Complete Season 1. Um, this is really in poor condition, unfortunately. Um, but the main character reassigned it for me, so fun times. Uh, fantastic series, really underrated. Very, very dark. Uh, incredibly dark, yeah. Um, hard to find though, I wish it would get a, a proper re-release so I can uh, get a nicer copy of it. And to those who were wondering, I did have Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, um, or the entire thing. Ten disc sit, look, ten disc set, sixty-four episodes over twenty-five hours. Just think what that converts into in One Piece time. Wow, can't believe it. I didn't even realise I still had this. So yeah, um, and now it's all on Netflix anyway. So it's pointless. Next up is Key Project. Uh, I thought I'd sold this to be honest. I think the reason I didn't sell it is because it was going up and up in price. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll uh, keep it for a little bit longer. And to be honest, I'll probably end up selling it. I don't think I've got any intention of rewatching it. It was an okay series. Um, I just kind of lost the plot with it because they released that many. And I didn't know where, where, where to continue with it. Dusk Maiden of Amnesia. I believe this is about a ghost, but I don't remember it. I don't remember this at all. Um, maybe I did, didn't even watch it, but but I, I do remember really liking it, so I must have seen it. Weird. It's kind of scary how like um, I've got these, but I was just like, oh, have I watched them? Um, yeah, possibly. Maybe I don't really know. Um, another one to put in the pile of. Maybe I'll um, I'll stick this on sometime. All the fields. All of the fields. I cried so much at the end of this one. Um, I really want to upgrade this one to Blu-ray and sell this one on. Um, just because I just like the... I, I like Blu-rays instead of DVDs. This is why a lot of these are DVDs. Is because... I just don't know why. I think Blu-ray boxes seem to look nicer on shelves than DVDs do. But that might just be me. Uh, what's that on there? Next up is Rin. Daughters of Minestomy. I don't remember ever watching... Oh, God, yes, I do. Yeah, well, that's enough about that one. Um, Paranoia Agent, fantastic series. Another Satoshi Kon masterpiece. I really, really want this in Blu-ray. Um, really fantastic series. Can't hype this one up enough. I think it's now on um, Funimation or Crunchyroll or something like that, so I would really recommend checking it out if you like Satoshi Kon. Fantastic one. I want to rewatch it as well. Familiar of Zero. I think I lost the yeah. I think I lost the first half of the disc of this. I don't remember ever watching it. Or maybe I watched it and didn't like it. But yeah, can't really comment on it. Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Complete Collection One Two Anime Legends. So Anime Legends was a thing where they kind of just released a load of uh, anime under that kind of name. I can't remember what the the, the stu who was who did it. Um, B or B's Entertainment, God B's, yeah. So yeah, they they had like a lot of the Gundam and stuff like that. Um, I need to get rid of this one. I need, I do need to sell this one on because I mean the problem was is I was going to sell it and I think I was going to get like nothing for it. I was just like, oh, I'll keep it until we actually get Gundam Seed on Blu-ray or something. But now I'm kind of like, yeah, I might as well just sell it on. Transformers the movie. I don't know if this is an anime. Uh, this is Hellsling. Um, I've never watched it. I do need to watch it. I got this. Did I get? No, obviously this is brand new. But again, it was another one. It was next to nothing. Brand new. I think I picked it up and stuck it on a shelf. Talk your Godfathers. This is the DVD. Again, I need to sell this one on or give it away or something like that because, yeah, um, fantastic movie. I just saw it on Blu-ray. Trigun Bad Lads Rumble. Um, this I got this in Poundland of all places. Um, I don't know if this is this is season two or season one, but it's Trigun. I've never been into Trigun, which is a shame because I really like the look of Trigun the manga when it was getting released all those years ago. I, that was my one of my uh, things where I was disappointed that I never ever picked that up. But yeah, um, never actually watched Trigun, so I probably should. I'll maybe stick this on the thing to watch. Next up is Code Geass 
Season 2 and then Code Geass Season 1 um, and some other series but we'll come to go down them in a minute. So Code Geass is one of the first series I picked up when I was getting it back into anime and manga. Um, I don't remember much about it but I remember really enjoying it. Um, I probably should, again this is another one I want to put on the shelf and kind of say oh I need to re-watch this. Um, Maybe I will do that thing and put some of the older ones that are weird, that Psycho Pass maybe. But yeah, um, yeah, good series, decently good. Also, another series that um, I never got into hugely was Nisekai False Love. Um, and the reason why I didn't get into it is because they released it stupid. I, this is like episodes 1 to 10 and 11 to 20, but it was like, it was like £40 each and yeah, it was stupidly expensive. But yeah. Um, which of them is the best girl? I do not know. I think there was another season. I think there was season two after this as well. So I was kind of like, ah, so much to watch. So much to watch. Next up is Witchblade, the complete collection. Yeah, you can see why I bought this, can't you? Um, I don't remember much of it, except it's got a mom who turns into a witch. Um, I know this is kind of more of an American thing, but yeah, stunning animation by Neo. Um, I remember someone in um, Forbidden Planet once complained to me that uh, the Witchblade stuff sold more than Bleach stuff, so yeah. But Bleach, I mean, what, what what are you surprised with? But interesting fact, really, I suppose. Even though it's not that interesting. Next up on Dragon Ball GT. Yeah. Um, signed by Kyle Hebert, who voices uh, Gohan, I believe. Um, I don't think Dragon Ball GT is as bad as people see it. It's worse than Dragon Ball Z. Actually, that's a lie. I've, it is, yeah, it is really, really bad. <laughs> Season 2 as well. Next up, oh god, another one I've never watched. Wow, I need to watch some of these. I can't really comment on it, but it's free 99 Yeah, so many of these I've just never watched and... God, I can't believe how much of money I've wasted. Next up is Tenjo Tenge. Yeah, compared to the, um, the manga, this looks really vibrant and upbeat and really happy. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think I've ever watched all of this. Um, even though, interestingly enough, there's so many discs and it only goes, it's only like 24 episodes. So, yeah. Um, maybe someday I will sit down and watch it. Maybe. Next up is The Girl Who Leapt Through Time and Summer Wars. I really like these movies. Not watched them in a long time. Um, I really need to uh, check these both out because they were both fantastic movies. And the only thing about Summer Wars is that it's very misleading. I thought it was like very much a slice of life, but then you turn over and it's like, it's Digimon. It's literally Digimon. It's the Digimon movie that. Um, that the uh, the director wanted to create because he did create the Digimon movie. God, the Digimon movie. Appleseed, another fantastic classic anime that I feel like not everyone's watched, but it's one worth uh, checking out. Pat Labor. Nobody talks about Pat Labor. I love this series so much. Um, I really want to get the DVD, um, the DVD, the um, the Blu-ray of it. Because I think this is only like season one and there's quite a lot of uh, content for Pat Labor, but yeah, um, good times. Next up is Ninja Scroll, the series. I didn't buy this, I got given this from my brother. I've never ever watched it. Um, I, I'm guessing it's not going to have a ninja sex poison though, which is going to be a huge shame. Next up is Portman Black and White. It's a Portman movie. What are you expecting? It's nothing particularly fantastic. And next up, one of the worst movies of all time, at least for anime, in Digimon the movie. Yeah, people have got nostalgia right up the bucket for this, but yeah, I genuinely do not really enjoy this one. It's just not a fun movie at all. Um, yeah. Next up is Sekirei Pure Engagement. I don't know if this is season one or season two. Oh, this is season two. Well, I don't know if I've got season one anymore. Um, Sekirei was one of the first uh, harem anime I remember watching. And yeah, um, I read the manga not long ago and it was pretty terrible. Speaking of 
classic ones. We have Icky Tucson, Battle Vixens, yeah. This was one of the first manga I remember buying, Battle Vixens. I really, really wish I kept it. I don't know if I've still got it in, in storage somewhere. But I was really gutted when I was just like, oh, I fancy rereading re re this. But um, I don't think I've got it. But yeah, uh, very nostalgic series. Very nostalgic. <laughs> Also, Rosario Vampire Seasons 1 and Seasons 2. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really remember much of this, but I remember it being pretty fun and pretty etchy. Um, I probably should read the manga sometime because I think that might be a better way of uh, going through it. Next up is Seasons 1 and Seasons 2 of Dragon Ball Z. And this should go this way because it all forms one giant awesome picture. I've only got seasons one and seasons two because I got so far through them and then I just didn't watch anymore. Um, I might someday go back and buy these because I think these are still the only way you can get a good version of Dragon Ball on Blu-ray. Uh, which is annoying because Dragon Ball is a series that is just milked so much but you don't see much of it in general you just like uh, we've still got the blue uh, the orange blue the orange brick dvd collections that um, we released a few years ago so yeah um it's kind of disappointing that we can't get a blu-ray but yeah i might i might pick the rest of these up because uh it's dragon ball z and i kind of fancy <laughs> i think the problem was is i started watching them and i think i got so far and i was just so bored by the end of it um, because Dragon Ball Z is a series that does drag on. More than One Piece, I'm sorry, it, it really does drag on. Um, and, yeah, it's um, it's hard to rewatch. Maybe I'll pick up Dragon Ball Kai or something someday. Next up is Robotech. Oh my god, I didn't know what I was buying. I was just like... Oh, this is cheap. I'll buy it. And yeah, this is the butchered version of Macross. And I think I watched the first few episodes and I was just like, yeah, this was very difficult to watch. And I remember somebody really getting angry that the fact that I paid money for this. And uh, they were like, no, this is not Macross. This is Robotech. They ruined it. I think, I think from what I understand, it was like three or four different series that they meshed together to become one glorious, awful whore. So, yeah, um, I own it, but I've never watched it. Bakuman, I really like this series. I really enjoy Bakuman. And one of the, my biggest disappointments was the fact that it never got the season 2 and season 3 as a UK release. Um, it was a huge shame. And that, that, that's the problem with a lot of these series is that they, they got season 1, but they never did season 2 or anything onwards. So I never got anything more than that, which is a huge shame. Next up is A Letter to Momo. Really fun movie. Um, I really did enjoy this movie. Very underrated. Um, she sees spirits and these little uh, gremlin guys, and yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun. I would really recommend checking it out. I don't know why I don't have it on my shelf. Plin Prin Princess Aretti. Again, another one. It's decent. Um, I wouldn't say it's one of my favourite ones, but it's it's a nice it's a nice little movie. Yeah, very empowering. I would probably say. But yeah, it's a decent movie that I would recommend. Maybe checking out if you can get cheap sometime. Blood Blockade Battlefront, the little series that could. I really enjoyed this series. Um, I need to rewatch it because I, I, I just really enjoyed it. But again, it's one of those ones where it never got season two, and I had other stuff that I wanted to have on the shelf, so it just kind of got put away. Your Lie in April, this is part one, season one. Um, it was in an anime limited collection set. It's all out on Netflix, so I kind of was like, oh, well, yeah, it kind of gets stored away. Kamisama Kiss Season 1. I really like this series. I really like Season 1 of this. Season 2, not so much, but I really like Season 1 of Kamisama Kiss. Um, I think I've got the manga somewhere. I think that might be another one that's in storage somewhere. But yeah, um, really fun series that I imported from America. And then I think I got Season 2 in a MVM box and never watched them. <laughs> um, Death Note. Ah, oh, got given it. Don't know what it is. Dragon Ball season one. Yeah, 
Um, this is, oh, this is Manga UK. I bought this, did I? I don't remember ever buying this. I remember being given an American vert. Oh, maybe I got given this one. Oh, that's why. I remember Ray. This is why I don't remember it because it didn't ha I, I was given this, but I didn't have all of the discs in. So I think I watched disc one and never watched anything more. I think I'm going to have to either find some discs or potentially just chuck some of these because, yeah, it's a kind of sad thing. Next up is S. Cryad. Uh, volume 4, Volume 3, um, Volume 2, and Volume 1. I really love this series, um, but I'm really sad that it never got a Blu-ray re-release. And half of it is very difficult to find. It was uh, bees again, bees, you know, bees. I think they were like Funimation before Funimation was Funimation. Um, but yeah, um, really fantastic series that I really like. I think there's like six volumes, but I can't find the last two volumes. Nor that I'm probably ever going to. This is the kind of issue we used to have. These used to be like £20 each for each of these volumes. And yeah, um, if you want a full season, it was going to cost you like 140 quid. Not fun whatsoever. Next up is the absolute classic Tenchi Muyo. This is uh, the collector's or OVA collection. This is the original Tenchi Muyo series, really. Um, classic series that I'm glad that I own. That's as much as I can really say about it, to be fair. <laughs> um, and here we have Eye Shield 21, episodes 1 to 145, the end. So when I first started buying anime, I picked this one up. This is a Taiwan or whatever it is, and it's just fan subs all stuck together in a um, kind of whole DVD set. I love Aishil 21, there was never an official release. And then I got Crunchyroll and it's all on there, so I never had the reason to rewatch it. Interestingly enough, the fan subs are really bad to the point that, like, so far along, it just you can't even watch it. It's like literally unwatchable. Um, but yeah, um, this is the one and only one I ever picked up where it was just kind of like unofficial. Yeah, naughty, naughty. And last but not least is One Piece Film Z Collector's Edition. This is in Japanese, so I can't watch it easily but yeah look at that that is just amazing and that's a color spread from one piece so most likely Shoei is going to get this and demonetize it my god that is it that is my entire anime collection all in one video i know it was kind of up in the air do i do multiple videos do i do one video but in the end, I picked the one video. I've made my bed with that, and I've got a rest in it. My God, this has been a fun thing, and I've hope if you've stayed to the end, thank you so much for listening to me rabbit on for as long as I have. Thank you very much. God, I've got to edit this now. Thank you for coming. Thanks again for staying. Goodbye.